What's up Chaos Shinobi here? This is what if Naruto has ancient Tensegen, summary, ancient blood mixes in strange ways. Naruto's Tensegen see more than any other, all the way back to the original Otsutsuki. With those eyes, he can see the darkness no one else can. Chapter 1 the Pale Eyed Uzumaki One Hyuga Hyashi was having a mid-morning stroll on the day of the Kyuubi festival and thought nothing would happen today. He didn't believe today, the sixth anniversary of the Kyuubi attack, would be anything special. He didn't have even the smallest idea that today would forever change his life, his clan, and Konoha. He was completely wrong and in for a surprise. As he made his way through the streets of Konoha, idly noticing different stands with Kyuubi and Yondame themed games, treats, and the people setting up said stands. He heard a mob gathering and became curious. Usually, he wouldn't care, but he heard the name Uzumaki, and so he checked it out. Uzumaki. That was a name he hadn't heard since his wife's best friend, Kushina. Hitomi, Kushina and Uchiha Mikado were inseparable, until, of course, Kushina died six years ago, and then Hitomi three. While he wouldn't usually care about the Uzumaki, his uncle and the eldest of the Hyuga elders, Hyuga Haido, his former lover was an Uzumaki, Uzumaki Miko granddaughter of Uzumaki Mito, the wife of the shot I'm Hokage. Haido had always said that there was a chance of Miko being pregnant during the Uzu massacre, and if she had somehow escaped and given birth. Well, that would be great. A Hyuga descended from the Uzumaki and Senju? That would definitely help his clan. So he discreetly followed the mob, wondering why so many people would hate an Uzumaki. Didn't they realize how important that clan had been for Kanoha? Stupid civilians. The Uzumaki had done so much for this village. They had given the shot I'm Hokage the seal arrays needed to create Jinshuriki, designed the defense seals on the walls that absorbed chakra to defend against jutsu and keep people from walking up them. They had helped much in the first and second shinobi world wars, before their near extinction during said war. The Uzumaki were also the original holders of the five most famous contracts of Konoha. They gifted the snake, toad, slug, ape, and dog contracts to Konoha as part of the alliance, and they went out to clans. The Sarutobi gained the ape and toad, which was later gifted to Jiraiya by Hiruzen, the Senju got the slug, the Hatake got the dog, and the Hebi got the snake. That clan sure were slippery as snakes and with their Dokuten, poison release, as well as immunity to poison, it was no wonder they received it. Too bad Orochimaru had to take it after their near destruction during the Third Shinobi World War, the few left weren't so bad, but those were only the tip of the iceberg of the Uzumaki's influence in Konoha. Hiyashi was broke from his thoughts when he saw the mob had surrounded a boy, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy with three whiskers on each cheek wearing a black shirt with the Uzumaki spiral on its back and black shorts. They were throwing things at him from all sides, stones, glass shards, shuriken, kunai, anything they could get their hands on really, even trash on the floor. IT was just, he was dodging all of them even ones that should be out of his range of sight, rather easily. Everywhere except. The Byakugan's blind spot. He mentally yelled. From his vantage point, Hyashi activated his Byakugan and suddenly, the boy Uzumaki Naruto. The Jinchuriki. His eyes lost their azure tint. Replacing them was a pair of very pale eyes rimmed red on the outermost edge of the iris and rimmed purple on the innermost edge. The only thing was. The vein bulges of the Byakugan were absent. Besides that though, it was obvious to Hyashi that he had the Hyuga's eyes. Could this be? Is he really? I must find out who put a genjutsu on the boy's eyes. Only one person would do that. Hyashi finished his thoughts as he saw one of the civilians take out a rather rusty tanto and rush the six-year-old, ready to strike. In a swirl of leaves and dust, suddenly Hyashi was there, the blade caught in two of his fingers. The crowd was silent as they stared at one of the most powerful men in all of Konoha. H. Hyashi-sama. One of them spoke almost inaudibly. Leave, all of you. Before I punish you for the third's law, he commanded, and like cockroaches in light, they suddenly scattered, leaving Hiyashi with the barely conscious boy. The Hyuga clan had picked him up and soon, in another sunshine, was in front of the Hokage's secretary. Is Hokage-sama busy? Hiyashi asked her. She shook her head, not noticing Naruto in his arms, and signaled he could go. The Hyuga sneered at her lack of respect and lack of vigilance for enemies. Idiot civilians. He thought with disdain as he knocked on Hiruzen's office door. Come in. The cheery voice of the aged Hokage spoke from within. Hiyashi didn't need anything else to tell him, and he walked in, setting Naruto down in a vacant chair where he fell asleep, before looking at the Hokage. Hiruzen looked surprised at Hiyashi's arrival with his grandson figure. Hokage-sama. Why does Uzumaki Naruto have the Byakugan? Hyuga compound. One Hyuga Haido, an elder of the clan, 
sat in meditation within his quarters. He looked the very definition of regal. Haido wore the custom-fitted robes of light blue that was the unofficial uniform of the Hyuga elders with the Hyuga flame on its right shoulder and the Uzumaki spiral on its left. His unactivated Byakugan had a light violet tint to them and his regal and only slightly wrinkled face was framed by a shoulder-length black hair. If one were to look at his right hand they would notice a ring of black gold with a ruby in the shape of the Uzumaki clan spiral on his index finger, a gift from his former lover, Uzumaki Miko. Oddly enough, that's where his thoughts were at the moment. That was far from a surprise to anyone who knew the aged veteran of the Second and Third Shinobi World Wars though. No matter what he was doing, Haido generally had this look of sadness behind his eyes, the kind of sadness only losing your soulmate can produce. He wore a mask of cold indifference to hide this sadness, but it nevertheless showed up. Every single Hyuga older than 16 knew the reason for his pain. It all happened on a mission near the end of the Second Shinobi World War, back when Haido was still commander of the Anbu under his tiger mask and the codename Tora. Iwa had captured one of Konoha's bases and held all the shinobi and kunoichi there as POWs, so the Naidaim Hokage requested aid from the Naidaim Mozukage, Uzumaki Arashi. He granted it, sending his best Anbu to help in the joint mission. The leader was Uzumaki Miko. Haido could still remember her. Every single day. She had the brightest red hair he'd ever seen and eyes of the deepest violet. Her skin was always flawless from her Uzumaki healing and her strikingly curvaceous figure was somehow fitted into a tight Anbu uniform which he could see every curve, every part of her through. Her personality was very rough as well. She was stubborn, dominating and never backed down when she knew she was right. It infuriated him to no end. That of course meant that he was destined to fall for her. And fall he did. The entirety of the mission lasted. Three months. The Iwanin had the whole place locked up tight and never lost vigilance, not to mention they outnumbered the Anbu 5 to 1 with just their own Anbu, that didn't even count he was Jounin and Chunin. So they waited for the perfect moment to strike when those shinobi had to go elsewhere to reinforce other areas of the country. In those three months. Well the first was rather dull. Haido and Miko would constantly argue all the time over what they should do, when to strike, where to strike, how to strike. Then they cooled down after Miko forced him into a drink in their camp. The sick was good. But her company was better. They talked all evening and from that moment on, Haido was under the spell of the Uzumaki, the skill they had to make anyone their friend. That didn't last long though, as two short weeks later, after they both got drunk, Haido woke up to Miko in his bed. Naked. He was utterly perplexed, but not totally disagreeable with his predicament. It took them only two seconds of looking at each other before the dominating Uzumaki smashed her lips on his and they began another round. And another. Haido smiled as he remembered how he had told her once that the silencing seals she etched on every part of the camp were the only thing that allowed the other Anbu to sleep. She had retorted by saying betting that he couldn't make her break through them. He lost the bet, but he sure enjoyed what happened. In those short six weeks of being lovers, the two were inseparable. But all good things must come to an end, as they say. So when the mission ended successfully, Haido and Miko parted very reluctantly. She gave him his Uzumaki ring, and he gifted to her a ring of silver with a black diamond on it in the shape of the Hyuga flame that had been in his family's possession for generations, passed down from father to son. It was a promise. Haido had told Miko that he would request resignation after the war was over and move to Uzushio, as she couldn't leave her home being clan heiress and a probable candidate for Sandaime Uzukage. It was not to be, though. A mere three days after Haido got back, news traveled to Konoha of Uzushio's defeat at the hands of Iwa, Kumo and Kiri. And he never heard from her again. Haido feared the worst, and he withdrew into himself, immersing himself in training and suicide missions. He became cold and logical, even being offered a spot as Hiruzin's elder counsel, a position en route by Dansu and he was begged to reconsider his resignation from the shinobi program. But he couldn't do it anymore. For the last 15 years, he's been one of the elders of the Hyuga clan, the voice of reason that saw every possible result of a decision. Haido's meditation was interrupted as a knocking sounded from his door. Haido opened his eyes. Come in. He allowed in and walked Hyuga Hyashi as well as, Haido. This is Uzumaki Naruto. Hiyashi introduced the young boy. He had sun-kissed spikes of golden hair, three whisker marks, tan skin, wore a black shirt with the Uzumaki spiral on the back and black shorts. His most striking feature though was his eyes. They were pale violet, with a dark violet ring around his pupil and rimmed crimson on the outer edge of his iris. Son of Uzumaki Kushina, Hiyashi continued and Haido noticed the similarities in the two's facial structure and that hair. If he had azure eyes, he could almost be the son of the Yodaime who the Hokage has informed me was the daughter of one Uzumaki. Haido studied the boy a bit more and noticed something else. 
He held himself confidently, staring him down challengingly. Almost like, Miko, Haido whispered. Hi, Haido. That is not all. The Hokage has reason to believe his grandfather on his mother's side is. You. Haido looked upon the young boy, a boy he knew was a Jinchuriki. And tears welled up in his eyes. Why are you looking at me like that? He asked in a tone that so screamed of challenge. Just like his Miko-chan used to. Haido's eyes shed tears of happiness for the first time in over almost four decades. Because I'm finally seeing my grandson for the first time, Haido said with a sad smile and Naruto's mouth opened. He began trembling immediately. Why you're M.I.J.G.G.? He asked as tears threatened to spill from the lonely Jinchuriki's eyes. With only a slight nod from Haido, he was suddenly tackled by the small, yet strong and swift, body of his six-year-old grandson. It was a manner most unbefitting of a Hayuga, but Haido could care less about protocol. He thought that his lover was dead, when she had apparently given birth to his daughter. He never even would have guessed Kushina, all the times she came over, was his own blood. He never did anything for her a father should have done. He did do everything he could for her simply because she was a Nuzumaki, like his dear Miko-chan. He would not make the same mistake with his grandson. Naruto would be given the training he deserved, the love he deserved, the protection of Haido. Demon or no demon, Haido would love Naruto with the last of his years, however long that may be. Eyes that see all. Thirteen-year-old Hayuga Uzumaki Naruto sat in his academy class, coldly analyzing all around him. As usual, his Byakugan was active. He never turned it off, ever. With his insane reserves he never needed to and his chakra always recovered after he slept. Since it was always on, people just thought that they were his usual eyes and for some reason his veins never bulged when his dojutsu was active. Haido Gigi said it was probably because of his Uzumaki DNA and it altered his Kekai Genkai. That's why, even at the very front of the class, he could see Shikamaru sleeping, Sakura and Dino fawning over the brooding Sasuke, Kuji Munch, Munch, munching on his ever-present potato chips, Kiba talking with his Ninkan, Shino silent, and Hinata off alone staring at him. Naruto focused his attention on the only two friends he had in this class. To his left was the beautiful Kurama Yakumo, heiress to the Kurama clan. To his right was Fenikusu Daihi, heir to another minor clan, the Fenikusu clan that was famous for their natural affinity for fire that allowed even academy students to perform CNB rank katan techniques. He had inherited the full Kekai Genkai of the clan, much like both Yakumo and Naruto, which allowed him to perform even a rank techniques seamlessly, though he was limited to three or four of those before he passed out from chakra exhaustion. Daihi was wearing a dark red shirt under fishnet, black onbo style pants, shinobi sandals, and a wide-brimmed hat atop his head that was black with a red band going around the base of it and an injato on his right hip. Naruto himself was wearing something far different that when Hyashisama had found him. He now had on black Hakama pants, a loose-fitting black shirt, and shinobi sandals. His arms were covered in tattoos that acted as gravity, storage, and chakra suppression seals, the first to train his body and the second to improve his already vast reserves as well as refine his chakra control which was already stellar because of Haido Gigi's intense training. Gigi's training. Flashback no jutsu. Again, Naruto. Haido ordered the nine-year-old blonde. Naruto scowled at his horrible performance and struck the tree once more with his bomb. The chakra hit the tree and dented it once more, but no sign of rock was there, even though he was building up earth nature chakra in his palm, just as Gigi said. Again, Naruto. Naruto pulled his palm back and charged more earth nature chakra this time, ready to do it once more. Gigi is counting on me. He hasn't taught his awaken to any other person, and he says he never will. I have to do this. I can't fail Gigi, anyone but him. With a shout, Naruto tried again. And again. No rocks were present on the tree. Before Haido could even say anything, he witnessed as his grandson went again and again and again. Each time nothing was happening, the chakra was being forced in the tree, but it wouldn't become stone. I will. Do. It. Naruto stated with each palm strike. I. Will. Do. It. Four more strikes. His eyes showed a very unhyuga like fire, which was very Uzumaki-like. I. Will. Do. It. He shouted this time and sent one final double palm thrust into the tree, letting loose a burst of earth chakra with it before he promptly fell forward and passed out from physical exhaustion, as he had been up to this for the last twelve hours. Haida looked at the tree and smiled at his grandson as he saw rock coating the bark in just the barest amounts. Turning on his Byakugan, he widened his eyes at seeing that the core of the tree was no longer living. But stone itself. Yes, you did it, young Naruto-kun, Haido said softly with pride. Flashback no jutsu, Kai. After that, 
he had begun the process of learning Haido Jiji's katas for the Iwakan, having already learned the basics of Juokan. His Jiji had told him that Iwakan was based mostly in Juokan, with a small amount of Gokan mixed in there. Jiji's personal Taijutsu style was rather strange, and ingenious. The user would, instead of forcing normal chakra, force earth nature chakra into an opponent. This would result in two things. The first is that their chakra itself would become earth natured, restricting their ninjutsu abilities for a short amount of time. The second result happened slowly. After a certain amount of time, depending on the amount of chakra inserted and number of strikes, the person themselves would actually temporarily lose mobility in their joints, slowly being paralyzed as their bones became stone for a short amount of time. Before Haido Gigi taught this to Naruto, he tested his affinities and it was a surprise to say the least. His chakra paper split into four pieces, one turning to ash, one becoming damp, one crinkling, and one crumpling. He had an affinity to all five elements. Gigi had this theory. The Uzumaki were known to have affinities to wind, lightning, and water, while Hyuga almost always had it towards earth. And then the Kyubi. Yoko were known for their foxfire. So maybe the QB gave him that element as well. Naruto was born with the rare ability to use all five elements naturally. And so, Haido began his teachings of the Awakened to Naruto. That wasn't all though. See, Uzumaki Miko, Naruto's grandmother on one side, had given Haido two scrolls as a parting gift until they met again. Haido had told the blonde that she told him the first contains a copy of my branch of the clan's Fuinjutsu, and the other contains theory on how to properly mold two elements into one. A sort of pseudo sub element, if you will. I want you to have these until we meet again. They are just copies of mine, but you deserve them anyways. I know that you can only use Doden, but maybe one day in Uzu you can take on an apprentice. Or you can even be our kid sensei. She smiled at this point brighter than the sun. Won't that be the day, Haido Koi? When we have some little pale eyed Uzumaki to raise. Promise me that we'll be a family. You and me and the children we'll have. All together in one happy house. I promise, Miko Haim, the Hayuga Uzumaki sighed as he remembered that. Haido Gigi. You deserved happiness with Miko Bachan. He shook himself from those thoughts. From those scrolls though, Naruto had learned much few in Jutsu, many that only an Uzumaki could hope to accomplish. Seals did run in their blood after all. That other scroll though. That was much more difficult and Naruto had yet to get anywhere in any of them. He would need a teacher for them, for sure. Besides his failures though. Naruto had progressed rather nicely. He had mastered the intermediate katas of Uwaken and was well into the advanced ones. With Haido's help, he had even begun to design a variation on the other four elements. They were mostly just vague at this point, but he had gotten down how to use each one of the elements in basic Juwakan katas and even what effects they had. Haiken, the Fire Fist, turned the target's chakra to fire nature chakra and slowly gave them second and third degree burns internally. Kazikan, the Wind Fist. Turned the target's chakra to wind nature chakra and sped up their chakra network, forcing their tenketsu open and caused them to actually waste chakra with each jutsu they used. Reiken, the lightning fist, changed chakra to a lightning nature and paralyzed tenketsu as well as shot the nervous system, tricking the target's body into jumbling up movements. And lastly was Suikan, the water fist, which changed chakra to a water nature and reversed the flow of said chakra with each strike of tenketsu confusing the opponent as well as making a useful tool to dispel genjutsu on others. He had named them collectively the Tenshiken, the Nature Fists. He just hadn't completely completed them. Thus far, all four of the new styles were roughly based on the Juokin and the only ones that were actually distinguishable from said Taijutsu style were the Kazikan and Suikan, the former was much faster and the latter required more flexibility. He would need to work more on all four if he was to ever create them. Perhaps he could look at other Taijutsu styles to meld with the Juukan just as Haido had done for the Iwakan? It was worth a shot. Then he heard something from Yakuma that got his attention. What happens if we aren't on the same team? She asked almost afraid. Naruto turned to her. Don't be silly, Kumo-chan. I already told you guys that the Hokage forms these teams specifically. I can already tell you how most of them will be made. It's pretty obvious he'll play Sino. Shikamaru and Kuji with each other to be the next generation of Ino Shikacho trio. Hinata, Kiba and Shino will probably be a tracking team. And then there's Sasuke, the Rookie of the Year, Sakura, Rookie Kunoichi of the Year, and Sai, that weird kid who is dead last, he always makes teams like that. The rest of these kids besides us are civilians. And he won't upset the clans by making us fail because of being on one of those teams. It's foolproof, and you know it. Yeah, Kumo. He's right. Daihi agreed. When has Naruto's reasoning ever failed us? 
he's the smartest one out of the three of us. We'll be on one team. I suppose you're right, she sighed. I'm just worried is all. Well, don't be, Kumar-chan. The blonde said. And look, here comes Iruka sensei and Mizuki-sensei to tell us our team placements. He pointed out just as they opened the door. Hello, class. Sadly. This is our last time together for some of us, so why don't I just announce your team placements, Ni? Iruka said with a sad smile. Naruto was a bit sad too, since he was one of the few teachers that were nice to him. Mizuki however. Naruto saw that silver-haired sensei's scowl in his direction. That team had attempted to sabotage his test at every opportunity. A genjutsu on the written portion that the Byakugan easily saw through. Unbalanced kunai and rusty shuriken on the accuracy portion that only Naruto's practiced wind manipulations sharpening had saved. An attempt to make him lose on the taijutsu portion by pitting him against Sasuke. The Uchiha's defeat had been swift when he couldn't blindside him. The ninjutsu portion was simple too. Mizuki had a genjutsu on the rule book in Irika's possession that stated only a regular bunshine was allowed, and Naruto was quickly able to disappoint him by performing said technique, which took an extreme amount of chakra control thanks to his juukan training. The Chunin was. Well he was pissed. Team 7 will be consisted of Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Shimura Sai. Naruto smirked at Yakumo, who looked at him in a way that said fine, you were right. Team 8 will consist of Hayuga Hinata, Aburame Shino, and Inuzu Kakiba. Team 9 is still active, so Team 10 will consist of Yamanaka Ino, Narashikamaru, and Akimichi Kuji. The two clan heirs and Naruto looked at Iruka. Finally Team 11 will consist of Uzumaki Naruto, Funiku Sudahi, and Kurama Yakumo. Fine, fine, I was wrong. Happy now? Yakumo asked and the blonde of the group simply grinned like a madman. Very. Be back in one hour to meet your sensei. The first two Jounin to arrive were Sarutobi Asuma and Yuhi Kuranai who quickly picked up teams 8 and 10. Another 10 minutes Gekko Hayate arrived, coughing a little. Team 11, come with me. The Kurama and Funikusu heirs as well as the blonde Hayuga all stood and followed the sickly Jounin out the door and up to the academy roof. The Jounin looked at their sensei, who coughed once before speaking. Why don't we? He coughed again introduce ourselves? The three looked confused. Can you start sensei? My name is. Gekko Hayate. I like. Practicing kanjutsu. And my girlfriend Uzuki Yugao. I dislike. Those who. Make fun of my cough and. Don't respect kanjutsu. As a shinobi art. My hobbies include. Learning many. Sword styles and doing anything with. Yuchan. My dream is to be named. A kanjutsu grandmaster like my own sensei was. Though a little hard because of his coughing, the Jinan did understand what he said. My name is Funiku Sudahi. I like hanging out with my two friends and also learning more of my clan's ninkanjutsu. I don't like people who are too arrogant for their own good and water. Daihi shuddered. My hobbies are. Training and reading, I guess. My dream is to become the only Funikusu clan head to master both aspects of the Funikusu Kekai Genkai. I'm Kurama Yakumo. I like hanging out with these two and training to prove my former sensei wrong. I don't like anyone who thinks someone can't do something because of something they were born with. My hobbies are drawing and training. My dream is to make the Kurama a major clan of Konoha. I am Uzumaki Hayuga Naruto. I like to be around my two friends and learn from my Gigi. I don't like the way my clan treats the side branch and how some people can't tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll. My hobbies include creating my own taijutsu style and mastering things from both of my clans. My dream is to one day find other survivors of the Ozoshia massacre and reform the Uzumaki clan. Hayate regarded his potential squad with a small smile. They were best friends even before any kind of near-death missions to bring them closer. That would make the test a formality. Since the day. Is so late. Why don't we meet up? At training ground 19 at. 8 tomorrow? The Jinan nodded and Hayate left in a Konoha sunshine, leaving the trio alone. Training ground 19, 8 a.m. Hayate appeared in a swirl of leaves to see his potential squad already here. Yakumo had a sketchbook in hand, Naruto was reading a rather sizable scroll and Daihi was sharpening a chokudo made of white steel on one side, black on the other with an onyx hilt in the shape of a phoenix with its wings spread and a ruby where its eye would be. He coughed and immediately had their attention. Naruto rolled up his scroll and it sealed within his robe. Yakumo put away her book and the chokudo sheath with an audible click. Glad to see. You are all. Here. The first thing. You must know is that. You aren't Janan yet. The trio's eyes widened. The other exam merely. Was to see if. You were eligible. To take the real test. That exam. 
is today. Hayate pulled out a single scroll with blue tips. There is a cavern here. With a scroll exactly like this. You have one hour to bring it to me. Hajime. The three immediately were gone. It didn't even take two minutes to find the cave thanks to Naruto's Byakugan. Once they did the trio landed in front of it and saw torches lining the walls. Damn it. Naruto cursed. Seals all over this cave guys. They block Dujutsu from seeing through the walls. My Byakugan will work inside but I won't be able to see past any walls. It's alright Naruto-kun, Yakumo said with a smile. Let's just do this. Daihi pulled his Chokudo out and they walked inside. It slopes down ahead, guys. The blonde stated. That can only mean we're approaching either an underground bunker or a set of caverns. Too bad we only have an hour. Come on guys, it wouldn't be caverns. Daihi replied. Why would we only get an hour if it was caverns? Without a Dujutsu many Anbu couldn't even do that. Good point, Daihi Kun. Yeah, I can see a door up ahead. Definitely just an underground base. Who put it here though? They got to the door and saw it was steel and split down the middle. Over the entire thing were seals Naruto recognized as privacy seals to keep noise inside and keep spying out. What purpose would that serve though? This is the origin of my troubles seeing and here, Naruto said. We should probably be careful. Can you cancel out the seals, Rudo? Daihi asked. Yes. I have a tag I created to short out seals by sending an intercepting pulse of chakra outward which screws up the whole matrix and forces it to be restarted. It's still a prototype though and I haven't tested it for side effects. Well, consider this field test number one, Yakumo said. Naruto sighed and pulled out a tag with the kanji for scramble on it set in a moderately complex array. He set it on the door and motioned everyone to step back. He coated his foot in earth chakra. Awaken, upheaval. He announced as he kicked into the ground to raise a wall from the the cave stone floor. He then held a ram seal, scramble seal, activate. Immediately the others felt the large chakra pulse and were glad that wall set some sort of buffer because the chakra that did escape sent them flying back several feet. Note to self, lesson scramble seal chakra output, Naruto mumbled. You guys okay? Sure thing, Daihi said as he stood and dusted himself. If I said my butt hurt and my hair is ruined would I sound too much like Kino and Sakura? Yakumo asked as she also stood. Not unless you started chasing a Chihusama around for a date. Naruto replied and studied the result of the seal. Nearly on par with one of my version 3 explosive seals. And it seems it doesn't scramble elemental chakra. That may be a kink to work out. Can you see through the door? Daihi asked. That brought Naruto from his musing and he looked inside but his tri-colored Byakugan widened. We may have a problem, he said. The scroll is being guarded. No problem. We can team up on them. The guard is a summons. Well Daihi's got his son Phoenix contract. I got the Kitsune contract. Yakumo pointed out. The guard is a giant spider. At least as big as Kuji times two. He's got the scroll in his web. Perhaps a strategy is in order? Daihi suggested and they nodded. With Hayate. Hayate sat in a lotus position with his sword in his lap as the timer ticked down to 45 minutes. Thanks again for the help, Genma. That spider summons should test them well. Sure thing, Hayate. I may not use it much but my Tosan's contract is useful. If your team is supposed to be capture, retrieval, escort and courier they may as well have some experience now. I plan to have them be all around, actually. They could easily make an assault or support team too. Hayate didn't cough. A fact known only to Genma, Yugao and the Hokage was that his cough was an act to get enemies to drop their guard on him. He only told those he trusted the most. That is, if they pass. If they pass, Hayate agreed. Back with the Janan hopefuls. Awaken, crushing blow. Naruto shouted and slammed his fist into the steel doors which shot off their hinges and into the room. One smashing into the spider's left side. It scurried back, limping slightly. The creature stood three feet above the Janan with a mouth dripping with poison, eight eyes situated on its head. The back of this menacing summon was brownish with lighter and darker shades swirled of that color swirling in an intricate spiral. It dashed forward with impressive speed at Naruto but Daihi quickly got in front. Grand dive of the phoenix. His sword became coated in white flames as he performed a jump slash that the arachnid dodged neatly. Naruto used another of his grandfather's moves. Awaken, Grand Divide. His fist hit DHRK floor and a fissure formed under the spider and it fell through. It'll come back. Daihi burn the web and get the damn scroll. The usually calm Hyuga was stressed as this was his first real fight. And come on. It's a freaking spider the size of an Akimichi. Daihi swung his sword and embers jumped to the web. Spitfire of the Phoenix. 
Quickly Yakumo then focused on channeling chakra into her sketch pad to create a genjutsu where no flames touched the scroll and Daihi caught it while Naruto watched the crevice. A little known fact of Naruto's Byakugan was that it differed from other Hayuga in that he could both see in the dark and see differences between elemental chakras. The night vision aspect caused his eyes to become pale crimson while the other made his eyes turn pale violet. You got it? Naruto asked. Yeah. Then let's get the hell out of here. That thing is extremely angry. He replied and performed a few hand seals. Uzumaki barrier seal. He slammed his hands to the ground and a light blue energy wall covered the crevice just as the spider ran into it. The trio ran. How long will that hold? Yakumo wondered aloud. Two minutes if we're lucky. And if we're not? Daihi asked. Just then they heard the skittering of a scurrying spider. We're not. Naruto replied and pulled out many kunai before channeling wind, fire and lightning chakra into them. Each one became coated in flames and sparks as well as became extremely sharp before he threw them. Two hit the charging bug and it made a noise the Hyuga couldn't quite describe but was definitely angry. Exoskeleton, Ruto. Daihi pointed out. They kept running and Daihi slashed downward. Rage of the Demon. Black fire shot off in a crescent arc that the spider simply dodged by dashing to a wall and crawling along that. Think. Think, Naruto mumbled before he widened his eyes. Daihi, Yakumo, when you summon exactly what happens? Well, you have to make a blood offering, usually by biting your thumb. Yakumo said. Then you make the hand seals for the summoning jutsu. When you slam your hand onto a flat surface, the blood spreads in the summoning seal. And damn phoenixes always leave in smoke when they're done. Never nice to me. Daihi complained. That was all Naruto needed as he began tying tags to a few kunai. What are you doing? Yakumo asked. A summoning seal is very limited. It can either be one or two way. One way is simple and only requires the one being summoned to have a marker to target and they simply use something akin to the Kawarimi or Shunshine to get to it only with more chakra. A two-way works sort of the same but the one summon has only a set amount of chakra and once that is used up or the flow is changed. Naruto quickly turned and tossed four kunai that stuck inside the spider's back and kept running as he held the ram seal. Four point scramble seal, activate. The trio turned to look at the giant cloud of smoke in the cave as they reached the mouth of said cave. They are sent back. Few in Jutsu Theory 101. With Hayate, Hayate looked at his timer after Hayate left, announcing the summons had left. That meant either the Janan found a way to beat it or, Sensei. He turned his head to see the trio arriving and smiled. Besides looking a little bruised and sweating, with a possibly incurable case of minor arachnophobia, they were just fine, with two minutes to spare. Hayate took the scroll from them and opened it, nodding to himself. Congratulations. You are now. Kanahagakur. Jinan Squad 11. We'll meet here tomorrow at 7 a.m. for training. Do not be late. You. Are dismissed. The trio nodded as Hayate left in a swirl of leaves before collapsing to the floor comically as soon as he left. Are we all agreed Hayate Sensei is a maniac for making three academy students go through that? Yakumo asked. Agreed. The other two said before all three knew Jinan passed out as their adrenaline left their systems. Training Ground 19. One week after exam, Hayate stood in one place equal distance from Fenikusu Daihi and Hayuga Uzumaki Naruto. Kurama Yakumo was off to the side. Hayate coughed once and then held up a single hand and let it fall down before jumping back next to Yakumo. This was the signal for the two shinobi in training to begin. In a burst of speed, Naruto channeled lightning chakra to his feet and dashed forward. Daihi saw this and immediately drew his sword, the legendary hokan of his clan's main family. His chokudo shone in the sunlight as it was enveloped in twin swirls of black and white flames to create a double helix of blaze release chakra. Spy it fire of the phoenix. Daihi slashed his blade and Naruto's eyes widened before he channeled water chakra into his throat and spat a stream of water to put out the embers, having to stop his movement to retain focus. Daihi took the opportunity to coat his feet in phoenix fire and dashed forward before aiming a spinning kick for his opponent's head. He saw the grin his friend wore and cursed. Awaken, upheaval. A wall rose up right into his midsection and sent him flying a few feet before he landed on his feet. He knew his ribs were possibly bruised but otherwise he was fine. Awaken, Grand Divide. As soon as he heard that, Daihi jumped up high and charged a small amount of his Kekai Genkai's chakra into his feet. Blaze release, Rocket Jutsu, he yelled and white flames burst from his feet and allowed him to remain airborne long enough to land away from the crevice and turned only to find Naruto in front of him. Daihi ducked the first three palm strikes and then jumped back before slashing down. Black Crescent. A slash of Hellfire shot forward to the Hyuga. Naruto jumped to the left of it quickly and tossed three kunai with tags attached at Daihi. Three-point explosive seal, activate. 
he announced and I he tried to jump above it only for another kunai to pass above and below just as he heard Naruto say two point chakra draining barrier seal, activate. A double layered globe of purple light surrounded him and before he could regret his mistake, Daihi was out cold from chakra exhaustion. Hayate caught the boy before he fell to the floor and announced Naruto was the winner. One week later, Hayate stood before his team with a small smile. After two weeks of your spars I have come up with a schedule for you three to train. By now the three barely noticed his coughing and took it in stride. The Jonin paused before continuing. There is only one of me and you three have much different styles. Even though I can help Daihi the most you two will not be ignored. Only a worthless Jonin sensei would do something like that. What will we learn then, sensei? Yakumo asked. I will help Naruto in lightning manipulation since it is my affinity and Yakumo I want you to learn genjutsu that don't require your sketchpad. You will one day surpass Yuhei Kurenai in that art. She nodded. We will begin tomorrow in training because now we have something more important. The Jinan groaned. Today's D rank. After D rank, Hayuga compound. I'm back Gigi. Naruto announced as he got to the building Haido's branch of the main house Hayuga stayed in, aka Haido and Naruto. It was a four-bedroom building in the traditional Japanese style made entirely of wood. The blonde made his way to the back of the house, as that's where the training ground belonging to his grandfather was located behind the house. Back there he saw the old man who took him in performing the pinnacle of Uwaken, a move which got him the moniker of Chikyu Dorga no Haido, Haido the Earth Dragon. He was crouched down with both fists pressed onto the floor before he slowly rose and one hand his left became rigid and straight as he glided it down his right arm and then his fist was pressed to his palm and both pressed to his chest as he inhaled before punching out with his right fist from 10 feet away from where the dummy was. Earth Dragon's Tyrant Killer He announced as a dragon of pure stone emerged from his fist and shot forward, causing the wooden dummy to erupt in splinters. Naruto was in awe just as he was any time he saw the move. It was downright scary how powerful it was. It was one of the final three moves of the awakened part of the Grand Master Katas. He was nowhere near those as he had barely gotten into the advanced ones. If Grand Master was S rank, advanced was high C rank to mid B rank. He was almost a Chunin level user to Haido's cage level mastery. And he still had to make four more styles. Naruto shook his head before walking to the old man he respected even more than Hyashi sama or Hokage sama. Hey Gigi. Maybe you should just quit? Your age is messing you up. I mean, that tyrant killer was much smaller than the one I saw last month. Haido turned to his grandson with a smile as he ruffled his hair. And I can still beat you into next week, Gaki. Don't forget that. The two grinned at each other before Haido pulled two scrolls from his robe sleeve and handed them to his grandson. Why don't we start up on these from the Jukan? They'll help with all your other styles, trust me. Just don't tell Hyashi Gaki. Haido had a conspiratorial grin on his face. Naruto gaped as he saw the Jonin level moves his grandfather would teach him. JGG. Are you sure? Of course. No grandson of mine will be beaten by anyone. You've got the pride of the two greatest clans ever on your shoulders. The Senju and Uchiha may be great but the Uzumaki took on three hidden villages alone and left no survivors and of the three great dojutsu which still has a clan of users? Last time I checked one Janan doesn't make a clan. The Hyuga believe in you and if you don't find the surviving Uzumaki, who will? They are your heritage, my boy. Naruto smiled. Thanks Gigi. He looked at the scrolls again with a smile. I'll have the rotation and 64 palms down in no time. Time skip, six weeks later, mission board. Hayate and Team Eleven stood in a room that held handbells for all the currently unclaimed missions for Kanahagakura up to A rank. They were spread across four boards, one on each wall. The east wall was the largest and held all the D ranks. This is where most Janan picked from. Team, it has been two months that we have been together as a squad. I know your individual levels as well as how strong you are as a team. For that reason, we will pick from the North Wall today. The Janan squad's eyes shone brightly. The North Wall had C-rank missions, one of which easily paid 10 to 15 as much as a D-rank. At the North Wall, the squad browsed through the different possibilities. C-ranks were pretty much bandit camp extermination, courier, escort and retrieval as long as any ninja involved that may appear to stop the mission was low C-rank or below in rank. If one showed up between mid C rank and low B rank it became a B rank mission. From mid B to high A was A rank and any S rank would heighten the mission to S rank, which only the Hokage could approve. This one, Hayate said and pulled one down. There's a small band of thugs terrorizing a village 50 miles from Konoha called Rokudo, probably 10 to 15 in all. No ninja in the band. The payment upon completion is 7000 Rio, 1 Rio equals $1. Seems easy enough. The others nodded. Definitely, Daihi said, 
grinning, stock up for a week's worth of supplies and meet me at the North Gate in an hour. He was gone in a swirl of leaves, North Gate, 8 a.m. Hayate appeared before his team in a swirl of leaves at the specified time and saw another group of Jinan there with an old man, one was the Uchiha survivor. Hayate hadn't really met Sasuke but Yuagao had been on his security detail a while back and said he was an arrogant snob even if he did seem to have dedication and skills in ninjutsu. The second was a pink-haired civilian fangirl by the looks of it. You could tell by the way her hair looked to be something that took hours to get right and she was mooning over Sasuke, practically undressing him with her eyes, or the twelve-year-old equivalent of such an action. The last was a boy with the fakest smile Hayate ever saw and dressed in anbu like clothing that showed his midsection. That Tonto looked like standard issue Anbu. Hmm. This was Kakashi's team, if Hayate trusted Yuagao's stories. The fact is that when you have an Anbu captain for a girlfriend and listen when she talks, you can piece together 1001 things about the hidden village you're in. And that was without her ever spilling one secret only Anbu and the Hokage should know. Even without trying, she never did such a thing. His team was actively ignoring Kakashi's and vice versa. Except the one with the Tonto. He was trying to speak to Naruto. All right team, let's go. The quartet left in four bursts of speed out the gate then. Why can't our sensei be on time? Sakura asked in one of her few moments of non-fang earliness. And in such moments Sasuke found himself agreeing with her. This time, even Sai had to agree. Why did Kakashi always arrive two hours late? Back with Team Eleven, they traveled among the treetops at Mijinan speed, being about seven miles an hour. While the three males of the team could go at least high Jinan speeds, Yakumo had to be taken into account. Yakumo was born with a naturally weak body, it was for this reason when Yuhi Kuranai took her as an apprentice four years back that the Genjutsu mistress of Konoha told the Hokage she would never be a good ninja. Needless to say, Yakumo did not like this. The Kurama heiress decided to prove the red-eyed ice queen of Konoha wrong and that's when Naruto and Daihi found her training at their favorite part of Konoha's forests. She told them her story and they agreed to help. She had gone from physically weak as a fangirl to Mijinan in four years thanks to the boy's patience and Naruto's gravity seals. For that reason, Yakumo would always be eternally grateful to her two friends. So they made their way through the trees. This was the preferred method of travel for any and all Konoha shinobi. The entirety of Hai no Kuni excepting only villages and other clearings had forestry thanks to Senju Hashirama and that's why all Jinan level shinobi of Konoha had to learn the tree walking exercise. In silence the four traveled for two hours before Hayate motioned for them to stop and take a rest. While they could in fact go all day and reach the village it would leave the Jinan in very exhausted states and they would be a hindrance in the mission. They dropped to a clearing about 20 miles in radius and sat to catch their breaths mainly Yakumo. Now would be a fine time for them to talk. Hayate had told them when teaching them the tree walking exercise and later when having them practice treetop travel that talking while traveling by treetop was something they should never do unless it was warning your teammates of something coming in Naruto's case. An enemy could be shadowing you at any moment in the trees and make plans to counter whatever you say. For this reason, Naruto, Yakumo and Daihi each pulled out a kunai with a tag on it and threw them so the kunai formed a triangle. Three point sound barrier seal, activate. A white dome surrounded the four for an instant before disappearing. No one outside would hear anything from inside now. Thank you Naruto, Hayate said. Always be prepared. He coughed once before continuing. I must ask you three if you are prepared to take the bandits lives. We will arrive tomorrow and then attack the day after. I need to plan accordingly. All three of us have already made our first kills, Sensei. Naruto replied, really? He was surprised. Yakumo went first. When I was only six I did. I inherited the full Kekai Genkai of my clan and that unfortunately comes with a price. My personality is split into two. There is Yakumo, who you know, and Ito, who craves blood and death. I also am completely aware when Ito takes over but am helpless to stop her. Ito killed my parents when I was six and I have come to terms with it. I can also channel Ito now so that Ito will do the killing and I can take back control. Do not worry about me. As part of my clan's rite of passage to gain one of the seven swords of my clan, the chosen wielder must be taken out of the village and use the sword to take the life of someone guilty and unpunished which the sword will lead them to. Soka, Twin Fires, led me to a runaway bandit who had raped dozens and killed even more. The Hyuga have a way of doing things for those in the main house but not of the line of the clan head. Our clan houses prisoners captured on missions by our own members, something all clans are allowed to do. And whenever a non-air main house member turns 12 they must take on one prisoner in battle to the death. Should the prisoner win, they are set free with all possessions they had at time of capture. 
If the Hyuga wins he or she gets said possessions and can choose what happens to the corpse as well as the respect of the clan for passing the right to become a member of the main house. Hayate sighed. Very well then. It is just sad that you three were exposed to death so early in peacetime. It's just what happens in the shinobi world sensei. We are glorified mercenaries and assassins. Yakumo replied solemnly. No job is too hard or too low for the right price, Daihi continued, for that is the way of the shinobi. Naruto finished as Hayate nodded. It was a famous quote among the elemental nations, especially in Kanahagakura and Hai no Kuni. When asked what they thought shinobi meant, the Sanin had replied that way with Tsunade having Yakumo's part, Jiraiya having Daihi's part and Orochimaru with Naruto's. Times certainly were darker during the second and third shinobi world wars. They were silent for the next five minutes as each person ate ration bars. These were brown bars about an inch thick and seven inches long with the consistency of bark and taste of it too. They were made to give shinobi an extreme amount of calories and protein while traveling without much fat. Their usefulness was never in question, the sanity of the research and development department for not making a flavor other than oak was. The break lasted 15 minutes from beginning to end before the quartet once again took off north, veering slightly to the west this time to stay on course towards Rokudo no Sato. Time skip, 6 hours later, 15 miles from Rokudo no Sato. The team had found a decent spot to camp for the night. Though it was relatively early out, Three were still Xinan and there wasn't much light left in the skies anyways. Camp was already set with four one-person tents arranged in a circle around a campfire made by Daihi. Around the fire were flat stones that doubled as seats for the squad courtesy of Naruto's Iwaken and each member held a sharpened stick with fish caught from a stream that was just a quarter mile from the camp caught by Hayate. No one would be able to get into the camp because of a combination of Naruto's eight-point barrier seal which was his strongest barrier that would still remain undetected plus the traps Hayate and Daihi set up in and out of the barrier with ninja wire, explosive notes and shuriken and Yakumo's genjutsu that made all inside the barrier invisible. Hayate's motto was to over-prepare and over-train, that way you are never overtaken and never beaten. It was the reason he was made Jonin at the age of 16. He would be a Nanbu but his cough was too loud for the stealthy black ops. So he settled for elite Jonin. You did well today team, Hayate said. We covered over 30 miles on the first day of your first out of village mission. Not many Jinan squads can claim such an act. He pulled his fish back and inspected it before taking a bite. Tomorrow we'll arrive at Rokudo and meet up with the mayor there, who is our client. He'll give us information on the bandits and we'll make a plan for taking them on. Hi sensei. They replied. The four fell into a comfortable silence as they ate dinner. After a few minutes, Daihi spoke. Ruto, how's that prototype coming? This immediately brought the attention of the other two. Prototype for what? Hayate and Yakumo asked. Well, it's a new seal I thought might be really useful. He paused. I was thinking about it since the scroll exam. When you tried to kill us with a giant spider, remember? I got to thinking about the summoning seal and how all of them are one or two way. I thought that if I made a seal that was more than two way and what if I could travel between these seals at will? Yakumo whistled lowly. Naruto-kun when you dream, you dream big. No one can argue with that. She shook her head. So, how did your quest with breaking the fundamentals of few and jutsu go? No luck so far. I can use two-way seals on inanimate objects with one seal on a scroll in my robe and the other in my room back at the Hyuga compound. I can also use one-way seals myself but the distance between me and the seal can't be more than 20 feet or the chakra cost exponentially increases. Within 20 feet how much does it take? Hayate asked. Um. I'd say about half as much as the Kawarimi. Well at least you created the first ever F-rank space-time jutsu, Daihi said. And with your reserves. Naruto smiled. I suppose so, but I'll work on it and add it to my long-term projects list. Yeah, Yakumo said and the four saw the sky was darkening. Well, I'm off to bed, she said. I'll take first watch, Daihi said. No one argued as they took to their tents and Daihi walked up a tree and sat on a branch to keep a lookout. Time skip. 11 a.m. next day, Rokudo Mayor's office. Rokudo no Sato was on the larger end as far as villages went. Its population was high enough to make it the sixth biggest village in Hai no Kuni, a country with villages numbering nearly 1,500 if not more. The reason relatively simple. The village itself rested on the center of not one, not two but six major roads, hence the name Six Paths Village. The roads that began here went to the capitals of Hai no Kuni, Kaze no Kuni and Rai no Kuni as well as Yuoshi. One of the three largest cities in hot water country, Yukigakura and Kanahagakura. The city had grown exponentially over the years from the travelers and merchants inside it. 
There was a slight problem, a group of bandits had recently taken to ambushing merchants and other travelers coming towards the city and even after six weeks the local guards had no idea where they were located. They always went to a different road each time they attacked and never attacked in a discernible pattern in location or time. The locals estimated there were 10 to 12 but there could very well be more than that. After all, a bandit camp never stayed in one place very long before it grew. Thus far nearly 20 caravans of travelers, merchant or not, had been ambushed and raided with over 40 corpses and nearly as much bodies gone missing from trains. The missing bodies were always girls or women between ages of 16 and 40 or so and the corpses consisted of men who could, and probably did, fight back. Children and the elderly were left alone. It was estimated the bandits had already taken nearly a quarter of a million real worth of goods from the merchants and travelers and every week the number of stolen goods, stolen women and stolen lives in Reist. These are things the mayor told the squad of Jeannan and their elite Jonin Sensei. If you have any questions about your mission? The mayor asked. He was a man with shoulder-length black hair streaked with gray from age, brown eyes and the looks of perhaps late forties or early fifties. A few, Mary Jimaru, Hayate said, coughing a little. First, about how far from the village were each of the attacks? Ah, thought I forgot something. None were further than a quarter mile from the village but none ever were closer than 1,000 feet. A range of less than 500 feet then. I am glad I brought the headsets. My second question for you is what to do with the things we find in the camp. Please keep it. Mayor Ichimaru said. Divide it amongst yourselves or sell it all, give it away for all I care. Those bandits are driving the economy down and if it will help you who save us I will be glad to let you have it. And lastly. I ask that you send no guards tonight. We will take care of everything and they will only be in the way. I would rather no more civilians lose their lives." The mayor smiled. Of course, Hayate-san. It shall be done. Treetops Naruto dashed through the trees with his night vision Byakugan active. He wore a radio headset as he traveled. Hayate's plan was simple enough. Step 1 had Naruto run in a ring around the village on the lookout for the bandit camp. By the Jonin's estimation the camp would be between 900 and 1700 feet from the village and less than 200 feet from any road. Close enough to ambush any road but far enough they could have ample warning if anyone trampled through the forest towards them like, for instance, a platoon of village guards. He'd been out since 2 and it was roughly 8. 6 hours of searching with his Byakugan. His tricolored eyes were funny though. Night vision made him lose the ability to see chakra but extended his range to nearly 1000 feet. His chakra sight which made his eyes violet shrunk his range to 100 feet but he gained something all Hyuga dreamed of, full 360 degree vision. His regular dojutsu, which was always active when he was awake, had a 500 foot range with the same weaknesses and strengths of any other Byakugan. Right now he was using his crimson Byakugan to see since it was nearly dusk but he sat unmoving in a tree. His eyes were carefully trained on a building that was once a shinobi encampment, of the seals on it were indication. Many of these were spread throughout the elemental nations. They were temporary bases for shinobi during the three wars and this one looked to be one from Iwa because it was compiled completely out of stone. The seals on it were simply chakra suppression seals to stop anyone from sensing chakra inside. He easily saw inside though. Sensei, Kumo-chan, Daihi. I've found them. He spoke into his headset. He was already situated in a sound barrier seal so he wasn't fearful of anyone hearing him. It looks like there are 30 of them, not 15. There is one leader as far as I can tell. He's a Nukunin too but I looked at him earlier with my violet Byakugan and he seemed to be about high Jinan or low Chunin in strength. There are also 37 women in a large cage ranging from age 15 to 42 and all civilians from their chakra. All of the stolen goods look to be kept to one side of their base, which I have deduced as a former Iwa encampment from one of the wars. They are situated roughly 125 feet east of the Yukigakura Road and roughly 1100 feet from Rokuto. Thank you Naruto. Hayate replied. We will be there shortly. Are there any guards stationed? Yes. No humans though. The Nuknan, while only low C rank, holds the cat contract. They patrol the ground rather vigilantly but only the ground. Cat? Be more specific. There are many cats. Wild cats. The ones I see are small, mere kits. I've counted a lynx, two tigers and a mountain lion though. He probably has enough chakra to get one teenage summons and not any of the bigger ones for battle. All right. Do not do anything until we get there, Sensei? After this is over. If it is there, Naruto. It took 10 minutes for them to arrive and by that time Naruto had taken a soldier pill to replenish his chakra. They dropped into the same tree as him then. Locations? Hayate asked. They're eating dinner now. All of them are gathered in the center of the building. The prisoners are kept in a cage of steel set into the east wall. The stolen goods are located on the west wall. 
The only room is situated on the south wall, just in front of us, in the center and is 20 feet wide by 20 feet long. The Nuknan, he's from Kiri, has been going in and out of it and no one else goes near it. The tigers disappeared just three minutes prior meaning their chakra depleted. Hayata nodded. The plan is simple. First Naruto, get rid of the lion and lynx at one time while Yakumo sets up a genjutsu version of them to trick anyone who might look out. I will use a lightning jutsu to drill through the wall of the leader's office. You'll need this. Naruto held out three kunai with tags. These are for my three-point sound barrier. If you take Daihi he'll explain them. Hayate took the kunai with a nod. I will give you word when I am through and at that time Naruto and Yakumo, execute plan prison break from the roof. Have five stone clones ready, Naruto. While the prisoners are being freed by Yakumo and the clones, Naruto and Daihi will isolate the leader and use teamwork to hold him off until I take down the bandits and come to aid them if necessary. Without a word the team left. Naruto and Yakumo immediately jumped to the roof of the cube-like, stone building and Naruto's Byakugan turned violent as he searched for the signatures of the summons and waited. He walked to the south end of the roof and both Shinnan saw the cats cross paths just as three things happened. First Naruto's eyes turned back to Milky White. Then he tossed a kunai that had a seal tag as he quietly said wide range disruptor seal, activate. The last was that as soon as the summons left in clouds of smoke two identical copies shimmered into existence when Yakumo whispered genjutsu, false copy jutsu. The false copy jutsu simply made an illusion of any object the user could imagine and was a low ranking illusion being one of the earliest the Kurama clan taught their children at age 6 since by the time all D-rank techniques were well within reach. As soon as that happened the pair made their way to just above the prisoners and Naruto pulled out an ink brush and quickly wrote out a seal array, drawing a circle around it. He looked at Yakumo, who was ready in an instant to cast another illusion, and smirked. The lion sing and hills take flight. He spoke into his headset. It was the first of four messages they would use to tell the other group when to begin their part. With Hayate and Daihi, the lion sing and hills take flight. The two swordsmen stood right where the office should be and Daihi took the kunai from his sensei and stabbed one 20 feet to their left and 20 feet to their right in the wall. Ruta's a prodigy of few in jutsu, sensei. The sound barrier he learned from his grandmother's scroll but he uses multiple copies of each seal to increase accuracy and strength of the seals. By setting a sound barrier in three places, he stabbed the last into a tree behind them an equal distance from the other two. They perform something called triangulation. Only parts inside the triangle they form are affected and three barriers are created. Daihi held a ram seal. Ruta taught me how to use his tags but I'll have to constantly feed chakra into them and concentrate unlike him so don't take too long. Hayate was impressed with his students' work. All of them made him proud, really. He had received the top few in Jutsu, Genjutsu and Kenjutsu user of this year when nearly all clans of Konoha had an air in attendance. His luck really seemed to be good. Three-point sound barrier seal, activate. Daihi announced and a white barrier shimmered before disappearing from sight. Immediately Hayate pulled his own katana out and held it in both hands while he channeled lightning chakra into it. Sparks began to dance along the steel blade. He then stabbed the blade into the wall at the floor and it slid through like a hot iron through butter as he slowly created an arch-like incision in the three-inch thick stone. It took over ten minutes to completely get through and when he did he pulled back and sheathed his blade. Daihi released the barrier and looked at his sensei as the Jonin talked through the headset. The moon by day and the sun by night, he said, with Naruto and Jakumo. The moon by day and the sun by night. The voice of Hayate came loud and clear to the two Jonin and each made a ram seal. Alchemy seal. Water, activate, master illusion, dream twist, doten, rock clone jutsu. First the seal glowed bright blue before the stone changed composition into another of the five basic elements, water, inside the circle. Next Yakumo's master illusion, which was one of the genjutsu types only she could use because of her kekai genkai, took effect and the water fell to the floor but no one even perceived it falling down or noticed the hole in the wall. Lastly Naruto made five clones of the stone roof with pure nature manipulation alone. Yakumo already had another illusion ready too. Chaos illusion, frozen memories jutsu. The seven jumped down to the cell and the women all looked at them, then to the thugs who didn't seem to respond at all. Don't worry, Yakumo said. We're shinobi of Konoha and we're hired by the mayor of Rokudo to save you. I already have an illusion set up that will make them see you girls just acting depressed and what you've been doing the last few days. The women were wide-eyed as Naruto spoke. These five are rock clones I just made and we'll take you up in groups of five to the roof. Stay there until we come to get you and then we'll take you all to Rokudo no Sato after we've taken care of the bandit problem. DH thank you. One teary-eyed woman in her mid-thirties said. The Hyuga Uzumaki smiled. Just doing our job. He said cheerily before watching as they all were taken in two minutes, Yakumo too, 
and his clones went up top to act as guard. Blind woman, deaf man, jackdaw fool, he stated through the headset. With Hayate and Daihi, blind woman, deaf man, jackdaw fool, that was their signal. Daihi pulled out his taito and charged it up with phoenix fire before stabbing the stone arch in the center. Passage of the Phoenix. In mere moments the arch literally melted into magma and hardened into black obsidian on the ground. The two swordsmen walked into the office and Hayate spoke the final line of the password. Let the Lord of Chaos rule. With Naruto. Let the Lord of Chaos rule. And that was his cue. Naruto charged Earth Chakra into his fist and slammed it into the ground, tearing the bars of the prison from the ground and twisting them as he did so. Awaken, Grand Divide. A fissure was formed just as Naruto heard an explosion and saw said explosion from the leader's office, sending the stone door off its hinges and crushing two bandits underneath. His own personal earthquake had killed four slow-moving men who fell into the hole a good fifty feet and broke their backs, necks or legs depending on how they landed. Starvation would kill them off eventually. The blonde kicked the bars with earth chakra running through his feet to send them flying and dashed right for the nuknan. The man had light skin and brown hair with matching eyes. He wore a blue shirt and blue on boo style pants with a tanto on his waist and his scratched hit eye around his neck. A rather large scroll was across his back as well. The man saw Naruto coming and kicked out but Naruto, now with Violet Byakugan active, rolled under it and got back to his feet. He faced the man, probably twenty or so, and launched out with twin palms of earth chakra which the nuke and jumped back to avoid. Daihi appeared then with his black and white chokuto ready to behead the man except he parried the slash with his own tanto before landing between both in a defensive stance. You made a mistake attacking me, Leaf Nin. You're dead. He slashed and the water in the air froze rapidly and several icicles shot off towards Naruto. He kicked the ground quickly. Awaken, upheaval. A stone wall rose and the icicles shattered as they hit it. Daihi slashed with his own sword then. Spitfire of the Phoenix. Blizzard bullets. The Nukeman slashed three times and balls of ice with spikes on every side formed and hit the white balls of fire, extinguishing them. Naruto then jumped over the wall and charged wind chakra into his fist. His Kazekin was far from complete but at least he had a few moves completed. Kazekin, Zephyr. His fist connected with the tondo of his opponent and small blades of wind nicked the sword and made small, shallow cuts in the man's right hand. The move just wrapped his hand in a shell of wind that would create razor-sharp Zephyrs constantly until the user released the shell in a condensed explosion that went away from the user. Kazekin, Gale Fist. All the pent-up energy suddenly exploded forwards and the Nukeman's arm went way up leaving his defenses open. Katan. Phoenix Sage Flower Jutsu. Daihi spit out several fireballs without hand seals but the Nukeman made three one-handed seals. Sutan, Wild Water Wave Jutsu. He raised his hand to his mouth with the thumb and first finger making a ring which he blew water through and extinguished the fireballs before it hit Daihi and knocked him back into a wall, giving him a concussion as his head hit the thick stone. Naruto growled and slammed his fist into the ground. Awaken, Grand Divide. The Nukeman jumped and landed to one side of the crevice he created before slashing and creating seven needles of ice. Naruto rolled to the left but then felt a kick to the face and staggered backwards. The Nukeman smirked and lunged forward but Naruto quickly spun. Eight trigrams divine rotation. The Nukeman flew backwards but righted himself. So you are a Hyudga. He remarked. I wasn't sure because your eyes turned purple. That's right I am. I am Hyuga Uzumaki Naruto. Grandson of Hyuga Haido, the Earth Dragon, and Uzumaki Miko. The Ice Queen and also the son of the Red Death of Konoha, Uzumaki Kushina, I will not lose to you, whoever you are. I am Yukishishi. One of the last users of the Ice Release stands before you. I am also the 17th summoner of the Wild Cats and holder of the Shiva Sword. All of my clan's pride rides on my shoulders and I will not fail them. Naruto entered a stance only one before him had used so far. You have failed, Shishi-san. You are in my field of divination. Wa? He never finished the question as he felt two strikes to his midsection. Two bombs. Two more strikes to the chest. Four bombs. Four to his shoulders. Eight bombs. Eight to his arms. Sixteen bombs. Sixteen to his arms again. Thirty-two bombs. And finally thirty-two to his torso ending with a double palm strike to his chest, sending him back into a wall where spiderweb cracks appeared. Awaken, eight trigram sixty-four stone bombs. Shishi groaned and barely lifted his head. Looking at Naruto. Wa? He asked. 64 of your tenketsu have become solid as the stone used to build this place. Your chakra has also temporarily become aligned to Earth release. You will be unable to move, Shishi san. That makes this easier. Naruto pulled out a single kunai and walked up to the man. He struggled but was stuck in the wall. The Hyuga locked away his emotions as he prepared himself. 
he imagined the huge flame and placed all his emotions within before putting himself inside a void and putting the flame just outside it. He became one with the void and one with the world, while in the void no emotion could get through. This was the secret technique the Hyuga had used for generations to seem so cold in battle. Haido had passed it to Naruto after his first kill. Masters of the Hyuga Flame and Void could use it at any time but Naruto wasn't so practiced and only used it when in a situation he wanted to block emotions. That's why he never even flinched when he slashed Shishi's throat with the steel blade. Time skip, four days later, Team Eleven had successfully completed the mission with no complications. The bandits were easily dispatched by Hayate, every single one dead from decapitation. Pierce Teordo or electrocution. Yuki Shishi, the leader, was dead by Naruto's hand. The women were all saved without a single casualty and welcomed into Rokudo with both groups extremely grateful to the squad. The squad went through the supplies the bandits had as well as their stolen goods and split them accordingly. The only noteworthy thing that anyone got was that Naruto claimed the sword and scroll of Shishi. He was no Kenjutsu user but a sword that had ice abilities would not be a bad backup plan if his Daijutsu was ever useless plus it would give him a skill in all five ninja arts. The scroll was in fact the wildcat summoning scroll but he hadn't signed it yet. He would wait until Konoha. For the next three days, Rokudo no Sato held a festival to celebrate their heroes and Hayate allowed them to stay because it would look bad on Konoha if the heroes left during their own festival. Plus, who wouldn't want to stay for such a thing? After it was over. The squad took their pay from the mayor but were extremely surprised. The shinobi system worked a specific way. The village took a 10% cut of every mission pay, this was what the client paid beforehand and was a deposit of sorts. The other 90% belonged to the ninja or team and was paid after the mission was over to said individuals. In theory the squad should have only been paid 6,300 ryo by the mayor. The reality was that the former prisoners and the citizens were so very grateful to the shinobi that they had donated to the reward and with so many people giving 10 ryo here or 50 there they ended up with a bonus of nearly 9,000 ryo that was untaxed by the Hokage or the council. It was not rare this kind of thing happened and it was in fact something many shinobi looked forward to. It was not a matter of if you would get a mission bonus but how many missions would it be before your next one? So the four had each walked away with just under 4000 Ryo apiece on their first C rank as a team. Not bad for their first time. And that wasn't even counting after they sold their things from the camp or the bounty that Naruto and Daihei had agreed to split from Shishi. Earlier today they arrived at the village and Hayate had told them he would take the mission report from the client to the Hokage Tower and they were free for the next three days to rest from the mission. And so Naruto found himself with his GG in their house with his contract between them. He had just told the Hyuga elder of his mission and wanted his advice. It is tough, Naruto. Choosing a summons has to be done right. While some summon clans allow one summoner to hold multiple contracts, usually the clans are already allied. Myself, I am a mole summoner because they complement my awaken very well. What you should ask is whether a contract of wild cats such as lions, lynx, tigers and possibly others would benefit your fighting style. I think I understand, Gigi. I shouldn't just up and sign any contract just because it's the first I come across. I need to find something to help me with my final fighting style. If that's the case then this contract is not for me. I need a clan that can help with all the styles of my ten chicken. Do not get rid of it though. You may not use it but someone you meet and become close to or perhaps one of your own children will be suited for the contract. There is also the chance the clan you finally become summoner to may allow you sign this contract as well. Of course, Haido Gigi. What about Shiva? Naruto held the sword on his lap. It was rather strange. As soon as he had claimed Shiva had glowed bright icy blue before changing shape. It was now the length of an okatana. Its sheath was a glossy black with silver dragons on each side and the sword had a light blue hilt that looked like two intertwining dragons for the handle that separated where the cross guard was. The blade was an icy blue with glowing seal work on it that seemed to be carved in. Experimenting while in Rokudo, Naruto also found when he channeled wind and water in it at the same time and slashed it created sharp needles of ice from water in the air. That sword is special. Normally Hyuga don't touch katana but you're no ordinary Hyuga. The Uzumaki were known as masters of not just Fuinjutsu but also Kanjutsu, so keep it. It may even be a gift from your dear Miko Bachan from beyond the grave. She was famous for using ice jutsu and this sword seems like something right up her alley. Right Gigi. I trust you're right. I think I should find somewhere to at least start on my summoning contract so I'm off to the clan library. Naruto stood and bowed slightly to his grandfather in respect. Haido smiled slightly as he saw the young man leave before he coughed as he left. He grimaced ss he knew it was getting worse. Just like Tosan, Haido said. Blood was in his hand where he just coughed. At least my family's disease won't affect you Naruto-kun. 
With your Uzumaki DNA in the QB there is no way it hasn't already been healed. I just hope I don't die too soon. The old man reached in his sleeve where a scroll with red tips and the Uzumaki spiral on it. I won't open it Miko-chan, he whispered. I promise to only give it to our child on my deathbed and Naruto is the only child I've ever had. Meanwhile Naruto walked along a path inside the compound when he saw something ahead which made him sigh. The other genius of the clan, Neji. He saw the boy who was older than him by a year talking to a cowering Hinata. Now Naruto was not one to use cursed seals but sometimes. Sometimes that boy made him want to use the caged bird seal on him. Neji was making some speech on fate and Hinata being weak or something. Naruto wasn't paying attention. If you heard it once you've heard it a thousand times. The two saw the blonde approaching and Neji scowled but bowed nonetheless. Good afternoon, Naruto-sama. Get out of here before I make up my mind whether I should fry your brain, stop your heart or turn your lungs to stone, Neji. The branch house member left mumbling something about fate as Naruto looked at the blue net. Are you alright, Hinata-sama? He asked. Dh thank why you, and Naruto kk kun. She stuttered. Hinata-sama you should control that stutter. Neji can only do that because you don't have much confidence in your abilities. I'm as sorry. Don't apologize to me, Naruto mumbled. Where were you going anyways, Hinata-sama? T the lib library. I th thought if I see could find a w way to get sd stronger maybe I could m make Tosan p proud. I was going anyways, why don't we go together? He asked and the heiress nodded with a light blush. At one time she might have suffered a full face blush of the brightest red. But she was saw Naruto every day and talked TP him a few days a week. So the two made their way to the Hyuga library. The Hyuga are the downright largest clan in all of Konoha and one of the largest among all the nations. This is one reason that they hold one of the largest libraries of any clan that the leaf, second only to the Uchiha. The building itself holds hundreds of thousands of scrolls created or collected over the long life of the clan since the first Hyuga, Hyuga Hyaran, who was the only son of the Uchiha who was born with the Byakugan instead of the Sharingan. It is a total of 12 floors high and set up like a tower or spire made of pure chakra steel and covered in a multitude of seals from the only Hyuga Fu and Jutsu Master, Hyuga Hijin. The library was a magnificent building. The pair walked inside and shelves of scrolls lined all the walls of the first floor, ladders set to reach the higher ones and a single spiral staircase in the center of the building to get to the higher floors. Each floor had to be as big as, if not larger than. The Chunin exams arena floor. Then they walked up the staircase and Naruto stopped on the third floor. See ya Hinata-sama. Next time Neji bullies on you just teach him who's boss, k? Okay? Because that's who you are. You're Hyuga Hinata next in line to being clan head. Hinata nodded. All right, and Naruto-kun, she said before going up to the seventh floor. Naruto turned back to step onto the floor, seeing a plaque to his left. Third floor famous Shinobi, Kunoichi, Jutsu, summons, etc. biographies and explanations. He nodded to himself. This would be perfect to figure out the best contract to look for. He set out in search of exactly that. Time skip, four hours later. Konoha is bust, Naruto mumbled as he saw the stack of scrolls to his left which he had read. The village he lived in housed the snake, toad, slug, dog, ape, sun phoenix, kitsune, spider, mole, turtle, hawk and formerly the raven contract. While some might have matched one aspect of his style, none would completely match up. He shook his head grabbed the next scroll and opened it, eyes widening. The Elemental Dragons of the Uzumaki Clan The summoning contract for Elemental Dragons was one of the seven clan contracts the Uzumaki were known to hold before their destruction in the Third Shinobi World War. This particular clan of summons holds powerful beings, dragons of both western and eastern descent. Not only that but if the summoner uses a particular elemental nature while using the summoning jutsu it will call on a dragon with that specific element. The last known holder of this contract was Uzumaki Miko and she most often summoned an ice dragon named Shiva to battle. After that the scroll pretty much explained many battles with the summons and named a few of the known dragons of Frida Fire, Ramu of Lightning, Zeus of Storms, Neptune of Water, Bahamut of the Golden Flames, etc. Naruto's hands shook with excitement. This is it. He thought. A Uzumaki contract that is perfect for my style. I don't know how or when, but I will get this. Especially since you were the last summoner, Bachan. Naruto then took the scrolls and put them back. That scroll had said the contract was thought lost but if anyone knew where it was. It would be Haido. Time skip, next day. Naruto made his way through the village until he found who he was searching for. He saw the purple-headed woman alone at training ground 14 practicing Kenjutsu Katas and he slowed his pace as she gracefully glided around the training dummy, attacking it from all sides in quick succession. 
she used mostly slashes in her style with a lot of footwork to keep moving in a circle around her target. Naruto also noted with his Violet Byakugan that her blade had a small mix of fire and wind chakra with about four times as much fire as wind coursing through it to enhance the Okatana. She stopped and sheathed her blade before turning to regard him. Her gaze was heavy. It was like she tripled the gravity around him just by making eye contact. She was that powerful. He walked until he was before her. Can I help you, Hyuga-san? She asked. Are you Uzuki Yugao? He asked. He had to enter the void just to speak before this woman. I am. Anbu Captain Uzuki Yugao, Kenjutsu Grandmistress, Hayate Sensei's girlfriend and the student of my Kusan, Uzumaki Kushina? That Uzuki Yugao? Yugao's eyes widened. WH what? S Sensei's son? You're a. But you have the Byakugan. My grandfather is Hugo Hato and he had a daughter with Uzumaki Miko, Uzumaki Mito's twin sister. That daughter was later found by Uchiha Hamaru, Mikido's father, on a mission and the four-year-old was brought back to Konoha and taken in by the Senju clan. She went on to become an S-rank Kunoichi of this village and eventually marry my father and become pregnant by the very man you called Nisan. Yugao's eyes got still wider. I believe you. You must be Naruto? Hi. I am Hugo Uzumaki Naruto. Besides the fact that you telling me this means your sensei is in a heap of trouble for not telling me there was an Uzumaki on his team, how can I help you? Sensei was like a mother to me and if you're her son. I would love to help you however I can. Naruto nodded. Can you teach me my mother's Kenjutsu style? He asked. My grandfather teaches me my Hyuga heritage every day but besides a single scroll of Fuin Jutsu I have nothing from the Uzumaki clan. My dream is to one day reform my mother's clan but I can't if I don't have their styles mastered. Yugao smiled slightly. She knew what he meant. Naruto, I will help you. I am also from a nearly dead clan, you know. The Uzuki are a clan of sword masters and sword mistresses but after three wars my clan isn't very large with only 20 members. If we lost our swords, the Uzuki would just be a family of ninja with nothing to bring us together. I am no master of Kushina Sensei's style though. That requires a swordsman with an affinity to both water and fire. I will teach you from the scrolls she left me though, deal? Hi, Yugao Sensei. Meet me here every day you're not on a mission at 3 and I'll teach you for 3 hours. Does that sound fair? Hi. Her eyes were very soft as she looked at him. You look just like Nisan, you know. You talk like him too. Your dream and burden is that of Sensei, though. She wanted her family together in one place after Nisan saved her from Kumo. Naruto hadn't known that. Thanks. I guess, he said. Yugao smiled. We'll start tomorrow, okay? He nodded. I'll be back tomorrow then, he said and turned to leave but felt a hand on his shoulder. Can I tell my two friends? They weren't her students but... They saw Kushina as a mother. All three of us were orphans and Sensei helped us get through it. Do you trust them? Naruto asked. With my life. All right then. Yugao smiled. Thank you. They'll be so happy to meet you. I'll see you tomorrow. The Uzumaki left. See you tomorrow. Atoto. Hyuga Compound, 9 a.m. Of the five basic elemental natures, Earth is the most resilient and balanced. It is solid and hard to break through. That is why most Earth ninjutsu is defensive and support based. These are the reasons creating the Awaken, a style which mixed Jukan's precision and Gokan's brute force, seem difficult. The most difficult move I adapted from either style though had to be Jukan's rotation. It is the Hyuga's ultimate defense, as you know. To use it, one must spin while simultaneously releasing an amount of chakra from all of your Tenketsu. The 8 Trigrams Divine Rotating Boulder requires the same but for all Tenketsu to release Earth Natured Chakra instead. Hi, Gigi. Naruto replied. Since he still had today and tomorrow off from training, Naruto wanted to begin training on the true ultimate defense of Hyuga which Haido had created. This is very difficult and if done improperly, your Tenketsu will turn to stone as if we had a spar. The blonde flinched. He never enjoyed being beaten by a man who was nearly 60. That is why your training for this move will begin with performing a variant of the leaf exercise. You will take a leaf for every one of the major 64 Tenketsu and use chakra to stick them to your body. The second step is that you must release the correct amount of earth nature chakra from each one to turn all 64 leaves to stone at once. Only after you've achieved this will we begin the second step. Hi Gigi, I will not fail, Naruto said, completely serious. He walked to one of the four trees in the training ground they own, an oak, before walking up it. After he had gathered two leaves he placed them on his palms. While a brash individual would try right off the bat to do all 64, Naruto was not brash. During his training for the regular rotation, he had found something out. 
If he started with two and doubled every time then it was simple to do it right. Within seconds the leaves on his palms turned to stone until he stopped the low of earth chakra and once regular chakra was channeled, they reverted to normal. The next two would go on his stomach, then four to his elbows and knees, eight to his back, sixteen along his arms and the last thirty-two would be on his legs. These sixty-four points were the major tenketsu and ninety percent of all chakra traveled through these. Other minor tenketsu were not nearly so important to the chakra network. But they still had their uses. Regardless of how easy it would be compared to trying all at once, the method Naruto used still took nearly three hours. He waited to move to each new set until he could turn all leaves to stone at once and within two seconds and he then waited until he could do all 64 within one second. Since the rotating boulder would be a counter he needed to be able to do it quickly in the heat of battle. When he hopped from the tree, Haido was writing in a brown tipped scroll before he looked up to see Naruto coming. I take it you've done it then? Naruto nodded. Good. It is nearly noon though and I have a council meeting in 15 minutes so we'll begin step 2 tomorrow. You know these things always run for hours. Sure thing Gigi, Naruto said with a smile. Your old bones better not turn to dust by then though. Haido smirked. Just make sure you outlive this old man, my boy. Naruto left with a wave while Haido looked down at his scroll in sadness. Along the top were the words the last will and testament of Hugo Haido. It won't take much to outlive me, Naruto. Just make sure you do he whispered to himself. Meanwhile, Naruto made his way through the Huda compound in hopes of finding something to do in Konoha when his Byakugan caught something coming towards him. Someone, good morning, Hanabi-sama, Naruto said with a bow of his head to the younger heiress. Hugo Hanabi had indeed stopped before him, accompanied by her elder sister. Good morning to you as well, Hinata-sama. He was a little curious why the two princesses would need him but he would do what he could to aid them. Just who we needed, Hanabi said. You're not busy? Right Naruto Nisan? Hanabi had taken to calling Naruto big brother since he helped her here and there with her Juken when she was still too young to learn. The girl was definitely talented if she could piece together the workings of the basics by watching with the Byakugan as two Hyuga sparred. Not until 3 o'clock, Hanabi sama. Is there something you needed? And Naruto kun. W would you am mind very am much if we asked why you to help us train a li little? The blonde smiled. Of course. I cannot stay past 2.45 though. I haven't had lunch yet so why don't I meet you at your training ground at 12.15? That's half an hour from now. Thanks Nisan, Hanabi said and the two princesses of his clan left. Naruto himself went out of the compound to find something to eat. Maybe some dango today? Sweets and such snack shop. Naruto arrived to the best place in all of Konoha to find something tasty. The sweets and such snack shop was run by a 40-something year old woman named Kiyomatsuki and her teenage son, Gojin. They were both nice enough folks and never turned a single customer away for any reason. Naruto had come here once a week for the last few years and had to say that they made some pretty good food. He had even gotten Hinata hooked on their cinnamon buns. If anyone ever thought she would never be anything but meek they hadn't seen the Hyuga heiress scarf down those sweets like they wouldn't exist the next second. The blonde took a seat at one of the booths and got a little relaxed. How could he not? The interior was a light blue and noise was very low, only a few other people were in the building now. The smells of freshly baked sweets mixed together and traveled to the pale-eyed Uzumaki's sensitive nostrils which only served to feed his slight hunger the chakra control exercise had caused. His seat was also very comfortable, being of a purple leather stuffed with cotton to make the back and seat much softer than regular wood. Look who it is. Been a while since I seen you Gaki. Naruto turned to see a woman who always brought a smile to his lips. Thought you abandoned me to be with those arrogant bastards, said woman slid into THR booth across from him. My family is not all bad. Onkone, Naruto said. Gigi is very nice. Hinata-sama and Hanabi-sama are also humble enough. Ah, uh, they don't count. You corrupted the pure Hugo ways with them. Anko replied. You don't even use the Juken, Atoto. Heck, you even know the basics of my heavy taijutsu. It was the truth. While out training one day, Naruto had encountered Anko as she attempted her favorite trick of throwing a kunai to barely slice someone's cheek. His violet Byakugan saw it coming and he slightly tilted his head to make her miss. Anko got kind of upset that someone ruined her fun and so she challenged him to a spar for being such a Hyuga prick and ruining all my fun. At 10 he wasn't on her level but since Anko hadn't gone all out from the beginning she nearly lost the fight. She was impressed with him and decided to help him out a little and taught him the basics of heavy style as well as one katan and doden technique and even the striking shadow snakes. In that time. Naruto had grown to see the woman as an older sister and even swore to one day rid her of the curse mark on her neck. Glad to know that I'm such a horrible Hyudga. Ah, come on little Foxy-kun. You were corrupted by me first. 
Naruto smiled and shook his head. You're not that bad, Nei-chan. Naruto replied. You're probably saner than 80% of the village. Wow. This village must be more batshit insane than Orochi team then, Anko said and chewed on some dengo as it arrived in two plates. The owners already knew that whenever Naruto and Anko sat together it was dengo they wanted. Language, Nei-chan, Naruto said as he took a bite of his own, a food he was introduced to by Anko. While he didn't think it was the food of the gods, Naruto did like it more than most other foods. Anko flicked Naruto's hit eye that hung around his neck. That thing signifies you're an adult. Be mature enough to handle adult language, Foxy-kun. Yes. Because I'm the more immature of the two of us. Damn right you were gaki, she said with a grin before taking another stick of dango to eat. Now, since I'm on the up and up and know all kinds of people in all kinds of places, I heard you went on your first C rank. Tell me all about it. A toto. Time skip. 12.15. Hyuga compound. At precisely the time he said, Naruto walked onto the field which belonged to the royal family of the Hyuga aka Hyashi and his daughters. It was a light green field of grass with a few training dummies and trees, a small pond on one side and a medium-sized section of the field set in a white ring meant for spars. He immediately saw the heiresses near the dummies. Both were going through basic katas for the Jukin but it was kind of obvious that the ten-year-old Hanabi was more skilled than her elder sister. Naruto was slightly curious of that until his violet Byakugan which were always active inside the village picked up on something. Hanabi's chakra system was a deep, chocolatey brown color while Hinata's was deep, ocean blue. Both girls had strong affinities but while Hanabi's was earth, Hinata's was water. Strange. Neither had seemed to notice him yet which gave him an Anko-ish idea. That woman really had corrupted him. Naruto pulled four kunai out and tossed them one to both sides of each girl and moved his hands holding the ninja wire attached to them in a certain pattern. One yelped while the other eeped and both were suddenly tied to a wooden post. The Hyuga Uzumaki calmly walked forward. Lesson 1, Remain Vigilant. The reason I was able to do that is because you did not pay attention to your surroundings. The sisters heard Naruto and turned their heads to look at him. This is something my Gigi taught me. This lesson is very important for all Hyuga. Our eyes are useless if we don't use them. So, that's what you're teaching us? Hanabi asked. The smile he gave them was not something pleasant. It promised fun of the Mitarashi Anko variety. Naruto pulled out two kunai AMD severed the ninja wire with wind chakra blades. You could say that. You could say that. The girls landed on their feet and looked around for Naruto but couldn't find him. They heard a dozen voices speak as one just then from every angle and saw multiple copies of him surrounding them. Sutan. Hidden mist jutsu. All of them exhaled a deep mist from their mouths that coated the training area. This is the signature jutsu of the seven swordsmen of the mist, Naruto said, though the sound echoed all over, making it impossible to discern his location. Haido Gigi learned it from Anuchiha when he was in Anbu and taught it to me since he can't make even five cubic feet of mist. The Byakugan can partially see through it but since the mist is purely made of chakra, it distorts your vision. We can't use our eyes then. Hanabi complained. She heard a whizzing sound and barely rolled to dodge three kunai. It's time to show you just how much vigilance can save you. This exercise will teach you to use your regular vision and hearing so you can know just how big an advantage the Byakugan supplies. The objective is to take as little damage as you can before 245. If all my clones are dispelled then the mission ends with you succeeding. If you can both stand by the time I must leave, the mission was successful. If not, mission failure. B but how many sea clones are there? Five each of water stone and wind. All of them are weaker than me with about 20% of my skill and strength. Hajime, Hinata and Hanabi had decided to stick together for this and stood back to back. Their eyes scanned and ears were sharp for anything that may come. Both had the Byakugan deactivated because the mist made everything blurry and fuzzy. Hinata had a kunai pulled out in each hand held backhand just in case and Hanabi was dense, ready to dodge and had a single kunai in her right hand held the same way. The first wave began with shuriken from all around them. They heard it and the heiresses rolled to the left, under a few of the star-like blades, and heard as they made a rather loud noise which echoed among the mist. Clang. 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 The girls rose up just as one clone was in front of them and tried to juke in them both in the chest. Out of instinct, Hinata threw her left shuriken and it pierced the clone's forehead causing it to dissolve into water. Hinata smiled, gaining a little confidence at that. Perhaps she wasn't nearly so weak as everyone thought she was? Meanwhile Hanabi had heard a shuriken whirling for her elder sister and decided to deflect it with her kunai, knocking it to the ground a few feet away. The girls were once more back to back and completely vigilant. They kept ears open and heard something. Something that caused them to immediately separate and jump away from each other. Suiken, salty tears. 
Dozens of sharp blades of water hit where they just were and another Naruto clone landed right there only to dissolve into water as Shuriken pierced him from both sides. Hey are you okay, Aimoto? Hinata asked. I should be asking you that, Nei-chan. Hanabi replied smugly but her eyes widened as she saw a clone appear and kick Hinata in the back to send her forward. Just as Hanabi launched her kunai at it, the clone kicked the ground. Awaken, upheaval. A wall of earth rose up to protect him and the younger heiress used a chakra enhanced jump to land atop the wall before launching herself at him. She gave him a kick enhanced by chakra to the face which caused him to dissolve into mud. She had made a simple mistake there in separating from Hinata and now the ten-year-old found herself surrounded by four clones. Oops. She muttered. One launched a kick that she ducked under but the second kicked her back while the third kicked her up. As she was in mid-air and in pain from the bruises she would get she twisted and launched shuriken downward making one disappear in blades of wind and another be gone in a puddle of water. She landed in a crouch and felt the throbbing in her stomach and back. She blocked out the pain and simply looked at the remaining pair as she pulled out two kunai. She was not prepared for the smoke bombs landing at her feet since she was so focused on them. They released a purple cloud and she immediately felt herself becoming exhausted. Sleeping gas. Was her last thought before falling into unconsciousness. Meanwhile, Hinata was standing and locked in battle with two clones. She had dispatched the wind clone and two stone clones earlier but then these tried to hit her with kunai that had a blade of wind two feet from the tip on them. Every time she blocked one with her kunai the kunai were cut into. She jumped back from one slashing but felt her arm being cut. In the battle her arm sported a few cuts as well as her face had one on her cheek. Hinata rolled backwards to dodge another slash and was up in time to send a palm strike to his back and dispel the clone into a gust of wind. The other threw the kunai at her but she ducked under it and threw her own kunai into his throat, making him become a gust as well. She smiled to herself until a clone appeared behind her and hit her in the neck with a chop that made her crumple into unconsciousness. By the time the heiresses woke up they were both sitting up against a training post and the mist was gone. They saw Naruto sitting across from them and neither had any wounds or pain to speak of. What? Hanabi asked in confusion. Vigilance is not a lesson to be taught on a single day. Naruto spoke. It is something earned through many mistakes. Your first mistake was made today. While the mist was real, the clones were not. The entire thing was an elaborate genjutsu coupled with few injutsu. H how? Hinata began. I began with those kunai I threw to trap you. They have mirror seals carved into them which made you think you saw and heard multiple copies of me use the hidden mist jutsu. That gave you the perceptone that I had clones out. While I am not the best with Genjutsu I can still use the false copy Jutsu and the false perception Jutsu. He saw their befuddled looks. Each of them are D-rank Genjutsu Kumo-chan taught me. The false copy Jutsu creates illusions of sight and sound while the false perception changes your sense of time, location and feeling. You two never moved except the first roll away from those kunai I threw. Every clone was simply a strong Genjutsu that you didn't dispel or see because you were tricked into turning your Dojutsu off. Jeez, Oni-san. You beat us so easily, Hanabi said. Just remain vigilant. The blonde looked up at the sun. It's nearly three though so I have to go. Since tomorrow's Sunday and the academy and Janan squads don't meet on Sundays I'll meet you here at the same time if that's fine with you too. H hi, sure Nisan, Hanabi said. Good. Then goodbye until then Hinata-sama, Hanabi-sama. He bowed his head slightly for both before turning and leaving. He had an appointment with Yugao to keep. Chapter 8 Fox vs. Cat Naruto exited the Huda compound after his training session with Hinata and Hanabi with his violet Byakugan active and Shiva strapped to his right hip. He was ready to finally learn some things from his heritage. Finally from his Uzumaki heritage, that is. Sure, few Jutsu was great in a lot of ways, but he needed to learn the other half of Uzumaki-style fighting, swordplay. And Yugao could help him there since she was the foremost Kenjutsu expert in all of Kanahagakura no Sato. Then there were these other two friends of hers, who could they be? Well, Yugao had said neither was a student of his mother, which means that it wasn't Furio or Itachi. Although Itachi was a Nukunin anyways, he would just have to wait to find out. Naruto shook his head as he stepped onto the right training ground. He would find out soon. Very soon. Because of his violet Byakugan, Naruto didn't have to look around and simply walked forward until he could see a group of three Konohaku no Ichi. One was Yugao and the other he knew as Konoha's premier genjutsu mistress, Yuhi Kuranai. The last. Wasn't that Kiba's older sister? Inuzuka, Hana, that was her name. Right on time, Naruto, Yugao said with a small smile to the boy. Of course. I made sure to stop my training with Hinata-sama and Hanabi-sama in time for your lessons, Yugao-sensei, Naruto said with a bow of his head. 
His eyes did catch Kurunai perking up at the mention of Hinata. You were training with my student? The red-eyed woman asked. Hi, Kurunai-san. Naruto admitted. We are cousins and both sisters requested I aid them in their ninja training, so I complied. They are the heiresses of my clan, after all. Oh, and what did you teach them? Hana asked, very curious what one Janan could actually teach another. Probably nothing special. I used a Genfu and Jutsu of my own creation to trick them into thinking they were fighting a platoon of my elemental clones until they were beaten and then allowed them to awake before explaining how vigilance is far more important than any dojutsu. Wait. Are you sure you're Janan? Hana asked. I have only passed my Janan examination and have yet to be promoted again since my instatement in the ninja military two months ago, Hana-san. He answered formally. Anyways, Yu Gao said. Why don't we make introductions and include our likes? dislikes, hobbies and dreams. The three of us have agreed to act as your sensei since your mother did so much for us, Naruto. Unless you have a problem with that, Naruto's eyebrows raised fractionally, but he was firmly within the void since the beginning, so not too much. I. Thank you. That is more than I could have hoped, Yugao sensei, Hana sensei, Kurunai sensei. Well, I'll go first then. My name is Inuzuka Hana, Chunin of Konoha and heiress to the Inuzuka clan. But you already knew that, I guess. I like animals, healing and helping people. I don't really like that Ichiha brat who always acts spoiled or anyone who abuses animals. My hobbies are healing both people and animals, studying medical scrolls and training with my Ninkan, the Heimaru triplets, who are in the forest somewhere right now. My dream is to become an even greater medic nun than Senju Tsunade. I am Yuhi Kurunai, Jonin of Konoha and Sensei to Janan Squad 8. I like illusions and teaching. I dislike perverts, womanizers and arrogance. My hobbies are developing more genjutsu and helping my students be the best they can. My dream, I suppose it is to become the greatest genjutsu user in the whole elemental nations. And I am Uzuki Yugao, Anbu captain of Konoha. I like swords, Hayate kun and helping my village. I dislike those who think Kunoichi are second rate shinobi just because of our sex and anyone who discriminates against my friends. My hobbies include practicing kenjutsu. Being with Hayate Kun and making the Anbu the best Black Ops force in the Elemental Nations. Above all, I dream to surpass Kushina Sensei and Kenjutsu. Naruto listened to each of the three Kunoichi intently, trying to discern a small amount of their personality from these tidbits of information. My name is Hugo Uzumaki Naruto, he stated. I like training and learning new things. I dislike fangirls, those who refuse to reach their full potential and a certain group of people who wants to make people form loveless marriages just to make powerful children. My hobbies include learning the history and jutsu of my clans, developing my personal fighting style and training with my GG and with my team. My dream, well, I have a few goals, but my true dream is to meet any survivors of the Uzushia massacre and to reform the Uzumaki clan. The women looked at him approvingly. His personality was definitely a combination of his parents. That much was apparent just from his introduction. Well, since this is the first day, I think I speak for all of us when I say we would like to see how skilled you are in order to better assess what to teach you," Yugao said with a small smile. That seems a wise course of action, Naruto agreed. So, you wish me to spar one of you? He asked. Hi, Yugao said and stepped forward. I am the most experienced in battle and the best to test your fighting skills, so I shall be your opponent. Is that all right with you? Naruto looked at the purple net before him and the void shook. A Nanbu captain? That was. A scary thought. Why did he feel so excited though? He nodded his head though and grabbed Shiva as well as the she that was in before he dropped them both to the ground. Just before they hit the grass, a ceiling array appeared and swallowed the blade before disappearing. The three women looked at the boy in surprise. What? Was that? Hana asked. That was a two-way space-time seal I've been working on for a long time. I simply used my chakra to create it momentarily so my katana could be safely stored elsewhere and not be in the way while we spar, sensei. Yugao nodded at the wisdom of that. With his experience, or lack thereof, in Kenjutsu the katana would merely be in the way probably. All right. Nai-chan, if you would? Yugao asked and the Genjutsu mistress nodded, standing between the two. All of the five shinobi arts are allowed in this spar and the winner will be decided when one is unable to battle or forfeits, or if I call the match, Kurunai stated with little emotion. Begin. She disappeared in a swirl of black sakura petals, signaling the start. As soon as Kurunai disappeared, Naruto shot forward at Yugao. The purple-haired Kunoichi easily spun around him and smirked as he turned quickly on his heels probably a skill gain from Kaiden training. He eyed her with his Byakugan and jumped back. 
You are much too fast for my Jukin to be of use, Sensei. He simply stated, Very smart, Yu Gao said and placed her right hand on her katana's hilt lazily. Care to try again? Naruto looked at her and formed a fist, surprising the audience. Since when did a Hyuga use a fist in Taijutsu? Awaken, Grand Divide, he shouted and punched into the ground, literally causing the ground to shake as a fissure formed, traveling right at the sword mistress he was fighting so she was forced to quickly use a replacement with a log to escape it. Naruto didn't have time to celebrate, however, and he kicked his foot up to block Yu Gao's sudden jumping slash with a wall of stone. Awaken, upheaval. The purple-haired sword mistress didn't seem at all surprised, however. Her blade was suddenly engulfed in flames and heated the rock, slashing through it as if it was butter. Seeing this example of Ninkanjutsu, Naruto immediately grabbed three kunai from his pouch and threw them at once, landing all in the floor, less than 20 feet apart. These particular ones had special tags on them. Ones he had been working on for a long time. Space-time sealing art, to wait teleportation seals, activate. Each of the tags glowed a bright bright white and the kunai disappeared, etching small seals into the ground where they had hit. Immediately, Naruto teleported to the closest one, about 40 feet from Yugao. He quickly made a cross-hand seal. Wind style, wind clone jutsu. Two more copies of himself materialized and each one shot forward while he stayed back. The two clones immediately shot forward. One took out two kunai and channeled wind chakra into them until blades the size of ninjato materialized from the tip of the blades. The other performed three hand seals and held the last, a ram seal, as he spoke. Wind style, airstream. The second clone exhaled a thin stream of highly pressurized air that Yu Gao switched out with a log to avoid. The log had a hole created straight through the center of it all the way through. Meanwhile, the first clone threw the first kunai at Yu Gao, but she intercepted it with her katana, coated in a combination of both fire and wind chakra to knock it aside. Quickly, he shot forward and attempted to lunge at the Anbu captain but she simply sidestepped it and slashed through the clone's midsection with a fire-coated blade. The clone exploded in blades of air, catching the Anbu off guard and making slight cuts in her Anbu clothing. Well, best not to take those on at close range. Yu Gao muttered. I've never seen those used before though. The remaining clone nodded. A Sunugakura technique that was tucked inside the Hyuga library, he stated while performing hand seals. Just like this one. Wind style, wind sword jutsu. And with that, a katana of pure wind formed in one hand and he dashed forward, slashing at Yu Gao's chest. She easily parried it with her own wind-cloaked katana and quickly shoved a kunai into the clone's throat while simultaneously performing a body flicker of leaves. The original Naruto stood in the same place, having analyzed both clones' easy defeat. With that thought in mind, he used his violet Byakugan to see her appear 50 feet from him and grip six kunai three to each hand tightly and threw them all at a vital organ. Yugao easily deflected every single one with minimal effort and movement of her katana. The kunai landed on the floor uselessly and Naruto frowned. Not good. Not good at all. He crouched down slightly before channeling chakra to his legs and dashing forward quickly. Yugao followed his movements and awaited his arrival. Naruto's right palm was coated in flames while the left sparked with electricity as he arrived at her location and he thrust out his fiery hand attempting to hit the kunoichi who simply danced around it. His other one moved faster due to lightning chakra and came closer, but still ultimately failed. Yu Gao took his imbalance and used it to make him pay, grabbing his right arm just below the shoulder blade and throwing him straight to the ground. Before he could even make a move to get up, a foot was planted squarely on his chest and a katana pointed at his throat. Yu Gao wins. Kurinai spoke up, though a clear amount of surprise had entered her voice even as both her and the Inuzuka heiress walked forward. Yu Gao smiled and sheathed her blade before offering her hand to Naruto, which he gladly accepted. Despite that fact, I am still impressed, Yu Gao stated. You are definitely far above Jinan level. I'd say you could take on perhaps nearly every Chunin in this village and a few newly promoted Okubatsu Jonin and win. You showed excellent wisdom in your moves, restrained from celebration and from making needless moves. Your Fuinjutsu was impressive, as is your Naitaiyutsu. I saw none of your Genjutsu but your shuriken jutsu looks advanced far above most chunin. All in all, you can consider yourself at least mid C rank to low B rank in skill right now, Kurunai stated, but we'll take you far above that, Naruto-kun, Hana continued. Between the three of us, we are the current best in the village in our art. Kenjutsu, Genjutsu, and Medical Ninjutsu. While Kushina, Itachi and Tsunade-sama were indeed stronger in these aspects, none have been in the village for a very long time and only Tsunade-sama is likely to ever come back since one is deceased and the other is an Uknan. Naruto bowed his head. Arigato, Yugao-sensei, 
Kurunai sensei, Hana sensei. The women smiled, for today, we are done, Yu Gao stated. Tomorrow at the same time one of us will be here to help you in our area of expertise, but we each must make schedules for now. You understand, right? Naruto nodded, of course. I will see you at the appointed time, sensei. Hana smirked, and don't be so formal all the time, Naruto-kun, she said and ruffled his spiky hair good-naturedly. Though Naruto wished to protest, he did not. Instead, he allowed the void to drop, right? Of course. Emotion finally re-entered his voice. The women smiled to him, now. Why don't you leave us to make our decisions for your training? Naruto nodded and turned to leave, making sure to pick up his six kunai on the way out. His personal tags were not something he wished other to get to just yet. It was one of his greatest advantages, after all. As he left, the three kunoichi looked at one another. So, who gets him tomorrow? Hana asked. The other two women shared a look. With the Hyuga Chakra control, he would benefit from either of us, Kuren I said. However, I will only be able to teach on weekends since I have my own students and with tomorrow being Sunday and all, I won't have nearly enough time to make a lesson up. Then I think Yu Gao Chan should get him, Hana said. He wanted Kenjutsu training after all. Next weekend and the other after unless she's on a mission, Kuren I Chan can teach him. Yu Gao has him on weekdays and whenever one of you is on a mission I'll take over. Sound good? The Anbu and Jonin thought of it before nodding. Sounds good. They replied as one, Kanahagakura mission board. Two months later, this one looks like it should be simple enough. Hayate coughed out as he took a mission from the C rank board. That actually looks easy, Naruto said with surprise as his Byakugan allowed him to see what was written on it. The other two looked at him and Hayate shrugged, allowing him to explain. The mission objective is simply to deliver a package from one of the merchants here to the village leader of Kusagakur. It pays 2,800 Rio, so 700 for each of us. You're right. Yakumo muttered. It doesn't sound like any fighting will be involved. She paused in thought. It's only a C rank because it requires travel outside the village, isn't it? Hayate nodded once. That is true. That is one of the ways a mission goes from D rank to C rank. The other main reason a mission may be C rank is if bandit encounters are probable or if there is a chance that the team may encounter a ninja of mid C rank or below in a battle. So, we've got an easy mission? Daihi asked. Hayate didn't nod or shake his head, rather, he looked at the mission's paper. Do not ever assume such a thing exists, he said. A mission's parameters are always subject to change. A mission is never over until we report to the Hokage at success, otherwise the rank of a mission can always go up. The risk to our lives is very real even on such a easy mission as a simple courier one. Remember, never let your guard down and never underestimate the value of over-preparation. The Jinan squad listened to Hayate's speech, ignoring the coughs as they had gotten used to them, and nodded. Hi, Hayate-sensei. They answered. All right. We will leave in two hours. Gather all the supplies necessary for this mission and meet at the East Gate. Hayate disappeared in a swirl of leaves, leaving Naruto. Daihi and Yakumo in the room. I guess we'll see each other in two hours, Daihi said and was suddenly consumed in black fire, before he disappeared in a swirling vortex of fire. Naruto and Yakumo looked at each other. Does he seem a little off to you? Naruto asked Yakumo who thought a moment and shrugged. He's probably just excited to leave the village again. The Kurama heir said and Naruto thought about it. You're probably right, he said as he saw Yakumo's yin chakra expand over her body and shadows envelop her body. See you at the gate, she said as she disappeared into nothingness as shadows swallowed her form and he nodded before focusing his chakra and reverse summoning himself to his room through a seal he kept there. His room wasn't packed with too much in the way of furniture. He had a simple bed with white sheets and blue covers, a single dresser, a closet and two shelves filled with scrolls he had either written himself, bought from a traveling merchant, been given or checked out from the Hyuga library. The walls were a pale white that normal Hyuga had for their Byakugan. The most unique factor of his room, though, were three things. The first was that seals were written on the floor, walls and ceiling of his room. The second was that items were littered over his room that could quickly be transported to his location through the two-way space-time seals he had. The final was that on one wall was a desk covered in scrolls, paper tags, ink jars and brushes, his few in Jutsu workshop. Glancing at the room, he tapped his chin. Well, what to do? what to do? He asked himself as he wanted to figure out how to best prepare for this mission. He heard a knock at the door then. Come in, Jigi, he said, already knowing who it was. The old man came in, using a cane to walk. It was something he had taken to using six weeks ago and was the most obvious sign of his age. You're back earlier than I thought. 
No D ranks today? Naruto shook his head. Nope. Sensei is letting us take another C rank today. It's just a courier mission to Kusagakur no Sato and the threat of bandits or opposing ninja is pretty small. Haido nodded and took a step inside, glancing around the room. I suppose you have some time to gather supplies? Haido asked and Naruto held up two fingers. Two hours? Hmm. Have a shadow clone pack your supplies, I have something I want you to see before you go. This piqued Naruto's curiosity and he nodded, forming a cross-like hand seal with the first two fingers of both hands and two clones popped into existence who already knew what to do. Haido left and Naruto followed right behind him. Silence reigned in their house as the two walked up a set of stairs and traveled down the hallway of the second floor until they came to a bookcase on the left side of the hall. Um, Jigi? Naruto asked. Patience, my boy. Haida lightly scolded as he held up his left hand in a ram seal and it glowed a deep brown, signifying that he was molding earth chakra in a specific way. He pressed the tips of his two finger, still in the one-handed seal, against the top shelf and slid his hand down the bookcase. When he lifted his hand, Naruto was surprised by the result. The bookcase shimmered and then simply phased from existence. No. It disappeared into a storage seal, Naruto realized. In its place was a set of stone stairs leading downwards in a spiral formation. What? Is this? Naruto asked. You'll see, Haido said and led the way down. Naruto noted that the walls were lined with illumination seals, a type of fuinjutsu which lit up an area indefinitely by converting the chakra in an area into light energy, and used the light to follow the form of his grandfather. When they reached the bottom of the stairs, the Uzumaki whistled as he saw the size of the chamber. Welcome, Naruto, to the ancient underground complex of the Uzumaki. Is this? Under Konoha? Haido shook his head. I have no idea where it is. All I know is that there is an entrance to it here through this house. I was given the instructions on how to create the entrance by Miko Koi. She gave me a ceiling array which I placed in my branch's house which leads to this place. There are other entrances, but all of them are currently closed off and so I can't get to them from here. Wow. Naruto breathed in surprise. The arrays needed for that are rather impressive. And so is this. Naruto said as he looked around the newest scenery. The complex, this room at least, was a large stone chamber lit by more illumination seals and it looked to be some sort of training ground if the elemental absorption seals on the walls and the various wooden targets and dummies set up. Not to mention the wide arsenal of weaponry that was hanging on one of the walls and an entire library's worth of scrolls that were set up on two of the walls and looked to be protected by a multi-layered barrier if his Byakugan was seeing clearly. The final wall had a single large door which led to a hallway holding multiple doors. It is. The entire complex is large system which I haven't even fully explored. I also know where a few of the other exits are, but they are locked from the other side and I just don't have any time to go looking for them around the elemental nations. That's not something a ninja can do, he said sadly. But, I have had a chance to figure out the rough locations of a few of the entrances based on how space-time is distorted down here in the history of the Uzumaki clan as written in some of the scrolls here. Naruto's eyes widened. There are scrolls here about the Uzumaki's history? Haido nodded once. There are, my boy. For decades I have kept this place a secret to everyone of Kanahaga Kaur. I can't do that much longer though. So I need to let you finally have it. I have acted as guardian for far too long, but you are now old enough to bear this burden. I showed you this place now because. I may not be here when you return. Naruto's eyes widened. No. D don't say that, Gigi, Naruto exclaimed, his voice echoing in the open area. He saw the old man smile sadly. It is true, my boy. I have only a short time. I've done my best to try and hide it, but I am sick, Naruto. I am slowly dying from a disease that has plagued my branch for generations. I believe Tsunade was the one who named our problem. Neurofibrosis. She explained it as tumors filling our central nervous system, slowly killing us painfully. Mine has already spread through parts of my legs and lungs. And my only saving grace is that it somehow has left my chakra untainted. It is only a matter of time before suddenly Haido fell into a raspy, coughing fit and when he removed his hand from his mouth, blood coated his bomb. Jigi. Why didn't you tell me before? Naruto asked quietly. Maybe I could have studied medical seals more and neglected the rest of your training? Haido asked with a smile. I don't think so. How could I be responsible for you doing something like that? What? Haido paused momentarily and winced in pain. What sort of grandfather would I be then? JGG. Haido smiled and reached into his robe, handing Naruto a scroll. There is one last thing. This scroll here was a gift from... From your Bachan. I was to give it to you on my deathbed. But I don't know if you'll be here when that happens. 
So, the only thing I have to say is. I love you, Naruto, my boy. Once I'm gone, this branch will be under your control. And I know you'll make me proud. Naruto's eyes brimmed with tears, turning completely crimson, not pale crimson as usual, but a bright, bright red which shone in the pale light of the complex. I. He saw into Haido's body, saw the very life force of the man weak, and knew. He knew in his heart's heart that there wasn't anything he could do. Except one thing. I will make you proud, Gigi. Naruto said and hugged the man, trying his best not to hurt the one person who had been there for him all the time. There is also something I must tell you, Naruto, Haido whispered to the boy. Something. Regarding Konoha and the Uzumaki clan which I have come to find out. As I have little time left. I feel you should know this. Know what? Naruto asked, looking at Haido intently. The truth behind the Uzumaki clan's massacre. Away from his house in the compound, Naruto calmly walked. Outwardly he seemed to show no changes, though his crimson dujutsu was glowing it was so bright instead of the dull red it generally was. He firmly had placed himself inside the void, all emotion gone from him and placed outside of himself. Outwardly he was fine. As he walked at that sedate pace through the compound though. Inside he was absolute chaos. His heart was beating quick. His mind was in overdrive. Under the cold demeanor, his blood ran boiling hot. The truth of the Ozoshiogakure massacre is a secret guarded by the highest powers here in Konoha. Haido's voice still rang in his ears. Echoing in his head. To learn the truth, you have to know the cover-up first. Ozoshio was feared among the five great villages because of their immense power rivaling the Sinju, Uchiha, Hayuga and Kaguya clans. They only consisted of a single clan. But that clan had multiple branches that may as well have been clans themselves since each branch had their own unique bloodlines. The common traits among them were enough to bring the Uzumaki under the whirlpool banner, though. His family had believed blood holds more loyalty than any village. That your clan should triumph the decisions of any cage. The branches helped one another without expectations of being repaid. The village's strength was that each person would gladly give their life for the next person to survive. Such a philosophy. Protecting those precious to them. It gave them strength. There was no true Azukage. Each of the branches had a representative which made up the Whirlpool Council and convened to come to decisions that affected the village as a whole. Each branch itself also had their own council to decide affairs within them. This method of governing meant that Ozoshio, unlike other villages, had no head. If one of the branch heads died, an heir would take their place, nurtured by the rest of the village. Not only that, but since family was so important, they would be likely to hold a vendetta against the culprit responsible for their fathers, their mothers, their siblings, their cousins, their aunt or uncle or son or daughter's death. One death could very well bring down an entire whirlpool of bloody fury upon the assassin should their identity become known to any Uzumaki. They were also strong enough to back up such a way of living. Different branches of the Uzumaki held different strengths. The true Uzumaki, the branch which all others split from, your branch I might add, was extremely powerful. They were known for many abilities including few in jutsu, kenjutsu and chakra reserves so high they could fight for days without tiring. Many branches held different sub-elemental natures as well, most of which involved water, though there are records of some holding kekai genkai such as the shakuten, bakuten, and jitten. That was mostly due to having a parent bearing a kekai taut and simply not gaining all three elements, only two. The records in this complex reveal the reason being that the matriarch of the clan, Aotsutsuki Benihim, had access to all seven elemental natures and all sub-elemental natures, and her descendants are gifted with the ability to meld their elements easier than others. Naruto aside and reached the gate of the Hyuga compound, exiting without resistance and entering Konoha. His eyes saw every movement, every person and he ignored them while easily gliding through crowds of civilians and shinobi alike. They were a formidable force to be reckoned with. Graceful. Intelligent. Intimidating. One wrong move and you would be swept up in a bloody current. Three villages found that out the hard way. He saw them. In the shadows, those on Boo watching over the populace. Their masks hiding identities of those he might recognize. Masks useless against him as his eyes saw through even them. A new light was shed on his eyes today and he saw them differently now. Kirgakur, Kumagakur and Iwagakur launched a deadly strike on the island. The Mist's navy carried platoons of ninja from all three villages. Whirlpools created by seals were useless against tens of thousands of ninja using Sutton at once to alter their currents just enough for the warships to land on the coasts. Haido's revelation placed his views in the correct direction and his Byakugan were seeing clearly for once. Disruptions in those seals gave the ninja ample warning though. As the warships neared, leviathans rose from the seas and took down two ships before being dispelled. The soldiers sent were no Chunin. 
These were deadly Anbu and elite Jown and trained to kill. Other summons were sent after the ships, Phoenix, Yukiona, Rejuo. Perhaps had Miko and her elemental dragons been there the tides may have shifted more to their favor. He saw the looks everyone gave another. Those distrustful glances that patrons and shopkeeps gave one another, paranoid looks passerby sent another as if afraid the next one would mug them, leers perverted men sent to even mildly attractive women and the fear their eyes held of a group of thugs taking advantage of them. Over all the almost crimes and near sins, the Anbu stood watch, guarding the village's safety, prolonging the existence of these people. They weren't living, this was not life, not this unease. They existed, hoping to go another moment without darkness permeating their false light. As they landed, they died even then. Against even less than a fraction of Uzumaki compared to their large battalion of both clan and clanless ninja from three of the great villages, they still dropped like flies. Over generations, the Uzumaki had built a style utilizing their tremendous teamwork which covered each branch's weakness with the strength of another branch. Seals kept barriers up to protect the village until even they succumbed to barraging of A&S rank ninjutsu. While the Uzumaki had quality ninja, probably the best in the nations, the Iwakumo Kiri Alliance had numbers. Even the enduring Uzumaki clan succumbed to exhaustion. He reached a point where the crowds were so packed, it would require time to get through. Instead of waiting against currents of those dark beings who simply existed, Naruto mimicked the guardians of darkness, those Anbu, and took to the rooftops in order to travel at an easier pace. Even from his heightened vantage, he still was unable to lose sight of those ever-present feelings underneath the eyes of all his eyes saw. Death took the force of your brethren one by one. With each soul the Shinigami stole, the opposing force gained an advantage. Less Uzumaki meant the balance of power shifted ever in the favor of the other three villages. The price was drastic though. Thousands of ninja lost for a single Uzumaki to discontinue breathing. There were less than a thousand of your clansmen fighting the front lines, and the three villages' forces paid a heavy toll to take them down. Naruto stopped as his eyes caught something. Strange. He focused and his eyes turned milky white, allowing him greater range in order to see what he had glimpsed more carefully. It was. A light among the darkness. He spied Daihi and Yakumo together, laughing. Their eyes had that darkness. But they also had light. There were others too with that light, he knew. Haido Gigi had it, Hinata-sama and Hanabi-sama, Anko-sensei, Yuugao-sensei, Kurunai-sensei, Hana-sensei, Hayate-sensei. There were lights among the darkness. They had no knowledge that while those less than a thousand noble shinobi and kunoichi fought, others were evacuated out of the village. Children and those not able to fight at the level needed for warfare were safely led and escaped. They scattered over the nations. Others more powerful did as well, those out on missions but I have no knowledge on anything regarding them. Your family is out there though, Naruto-kun. These lights he had found in his dark, dark world. He only hoped he could somehow keep them from being snuffed out. But the truth of the invasion now. I have no love for what I must impart upon you right now. Most of the defenses keeping Kanahagakur no Sato safe are run by Uzumaki clan seals and those seen Juu Hashirama, our shot I'm Hokage, trusted his wife's clan, others did not. When he died and his brother took the hat and robe, he began a few underhanded plans. Naidaim Hokage Senju Tobirama was quite pragmatic, you see. I speak from experience under his command. After decades of careful prying and snooping, calling in favors and fishing out facts from rumors, the truth became known to me. He feared that one day the two villages might not be so close and wished to get rid of a threat before it became too much to handle. The other three villages were only too happy to agree for a price of course. He slowed his breathing and calmed himself. It was all he could do right now. That knowledge drove him to the edge just thinking about it. How could anyone stay calm when that veil was lifted from their eyes? All I can say is, do what you feel is best, Naruto-kun. I don't know what path you will go down once I'm gone but I know that you'll do the best to follow your dreams and achieve your goals. I'll be proud of you no matter what. Now, go and leave this old man to his thoughts. I only want one thing from you. Promise that you'll find your clan and keep them together. For me and for your Bachan. I promise, Naruto whispered to himself and saw the gate down below. With a single chakra and hand sleep, he landed there, the last of his team to arrive. Escaping the void, Naruto gave his squad a fake smile. Sorry I'm late, Haido Gigi had something to give me and held me up a little bit. Hayate waved it off. Just don't make it a habit, Naruto. You're ready now? He nodded and pale white eyes became violet allowing him full-range vision for 150 meters in all directions. That extra bit had come with training and was well worth the hours of focus. You have the package, Sensei? 
Yakumo asked and he held up a scroll in one hand with a nod before tucking it in his vest. The trip should be no more than three days there and three days back, two days in the village itself. On the off chance we are actually attacked, stay together and have each other's back. Alone we are strong, together we are more so. Nodding their understanding, the trio followed as Hayate sped off and took to the treetops, leaping from branch to branch masterfully. Hayate had point. Naruto watching their rear with Yakumo on the left covering them in a genjutsu and Hayate on the right, ready to release an enten and jutsu at a moment's notice. Silence reigned over the group and Naruto took the opportunity to begin molding his chakra within himself, channeling it to his ears as Hana-sensei had showed him. It was a technique created by Orochimaru, but vastly useful as anyone could utilize it to increase their hearing by exponential levels, similar to the Inuzuka's ability to mimic a dog's level of smell by channeling chakra to their nose thanks to their physical bloodline. By enhancing his ears, he heard the fluttering of insects nearby, the breeze ruffling over fallen, autumn leaves despite it being still two weeks to October. Konoha's summer seemed to end earlier this year than before. He couldn't help but feel it was a sign of some sort. Shaking those stray thoughts away, he refocused and kept his sight and hearing alert, trying to locate any threats to his squad. That was his main priority and main role. Hayate took point to ensure he could lead them at a high enough pace and also to make certain any enemies before them could be dealt with quickly as possible. Yakumo kept them shrouded in illusions to keep any possible enemies from locating them. Daihi was responsible for long-range support, to take out any enemies before they got too close. He was on watch to warn the others if anyone approached. Using these roles, the squad had come to successfully complete already two courier missions and one escort missions, this would make their fifth C rank. Because of the success rate they had, the three Jinan hadn't been on any D ranks for weeks, a fact they were glad for. It gave more time for their training, both under Hayate and under other sensei. The squad continued for a few hours before Hayate motioned for them to take a break and they landed in a clearing below. Nearly instantly upon their feet hitting ground, the three Jinan already tossed kunai to form a triangle around them and Naruto had set up a sound barrier. We're about a kilometer from the first village we'll be sleeping in on our trip, Ginosato. I know an innkeeper there who owes me a favor, so beds and meals will be free. When we get there, I expect you to lose your hit eye and act like civilians. Seal your weapons and Naruto, keep your violet eyes up the whole time. Why all the precautions, Sensei? Daihi asked. We are Shinobi, Daihi. Our greatest tools are surprise and deception. If someone looking for Konoha Shinobi is expecting to see the leaf headbands and looking only for those, they may just ignore us. The three of you are skilled enough in skills other than Bukiatsu that I'm confident you can easily take on many low-leveled shinobi without them. You are already easily Chunin level by this point and no non-shinobi could beat you. Working together, you are easily capable of taking on even B and maybe A rank Nin. Of this I am certain. Arigato, Sensei. The trio spoke as one. Yakumo then tilted her head and asked Hayate something that made him grin. If we're at such a level. Does that mean you nominated you three for the exams? Hayate asked. I was going to wait for the mission to be finished and us to be back in Konoha, but yes, I have. The Hokage was rather surprised, as was I, upon learning that, well, that all the rookie squads are participating. As such, this is the last mission we will be taking before the exams. The rest of the time will be used for training and preparation for said exams. Hayate Sensei? He looked at Naruto. Will the other squads be doing the same? The sword wielding Jounin pondered this a moment before nodding. Wouldn't it be in everyone's best interest then to have the squads perform training sessions with one another? Surely helping another train couldn't hurt? Hayate coughed and sighed. I agree with your philosophy, but not all do. I am not against such a plan, but we are getting off track. Go ahead and seal your weapons and headbands, then we'll make our way to Ginosato at a civilian pace. Anyone who sees us will assume we are just a family traveling. And if there happens to be a sensor type in this hypothetical group hunting us? Daihi asked. Yakumo hit him atop his head. That's what the chakra suppression exercises we've been practicing are for, she scolded. That's easy for you to say, Yakumo. The Finikusu argued. You and Ruto have perfect chakra control, but what about me? The smirk Naruto held told Daihi the answer was unpleasant. A bit of Juokin could make up for your lack in training? He pointed out while his palm glowed visibly with chakra, a light blue that made Daihi swallow. He looked to his sensei who coughed into his fist. You should have trained harder was his reply, all the answer Naruto needed before grinning. Kusagakur no Sato, three days later. I never knew how much I could miss this, Daihi said, referring to his hitayat once more around his forehead and the sword once more strapped to his back. The trio had spent the last three days traveling treetops and the ground, 
alternating when they neared the two villages they slept in, Shindo, a small town on the edge of Hai no Kuni, and Hanamai, one of the larger cities in Kusa no Kuni. They had just crossed the gate, Hayate warning them there were representatives of Kanahagakur while they were here in an allied village. Enjoy it while it lasts, Daihi, Naruto said. You know how paranoid Sensei is, he'll probably make us do the same thing on the way back. Yeah, Sensei. What was the point of that? Yakumo asked. Hayate pondered his answer a moment before speaking. Training, he said. There are times when you must use your mind instead of your body. Some missions require a strong shinobi to barrel through enemies. Others require the squad to be able to use stealth, psychology and misdirection in order to put a kunai into a target's back. Remember that a sharp mind always beats a strong fist. The Janan quietly thought about that as they walked. Why don't you three explore a little? I can deliver this package to the client. We can meet back at the hotel we'll be staying at, it's called the Hiding Snake. Sure, Sensei. I bet there's somewhere good to eat here. Come on Yakumo, Ruto, Daihi said. The blonde smiled to him. I'll catch up. I need to get some more Fuinjutsu supplies and some other stuff while we're here. The two minor clansmen looked at the Hayuga. I can easily find you here, I swear. Okay, Naruto-kun, Yakumo said. Meet us at the hotel then. He smiled to them and disappeared in a sunshine of five elements while the other two sighed and walked off together. He's been acting strange these last few days. I noticed, Yakumo, Daihi sighed. We can't push him though. When he's ready he'll tell us. Though. It does trouble me he attempted to fool us with that fake smile and mask. The brunette held her arms and sighed. I hate seeing him like this. The worst part is. He's not even suffering in his skills, he's just as top-notch as always. He just locks his emotions away when he needs to and puts up fake ones when he wants to fool us. Daihi couldn't help but to chuckle. I guess Hayate Sensei didn't even need to teach Naruto this lesson on deception. If we hadn't known him for years, I'm sure he would have had us fooled too. He stopped, causing Yakumo to stop as well. How about here? She looked at where he was gesturing and saw it was a simple establishment. No fancy ornamentation and called Ryugans. Looking in the windows showed patrons sitting in diner-style tables with bench-like seats on both sides of them. The food seemed to be akin to the Akimichi's barbecue-style cooking but a differences as well. Are you sure? She asked. Yeah, can't hurt to try it, right? He pointed out. She shrugged and the two walked in, taking a table across from one another. Taking the menus on the table in hand, the words on it seemed strange to them. As a waitress approached and saw their looks. She smiled. Hello and welcome to Ryugans. My name is Hanako and I'll be your server. Hanako-san, what sort of food is this? Yakumo asked and the brunette waitress smiled at her, showing white teeth. Her hands were holding a pen and pad in front of her body dressed in a pink dress fitted to show curves and ending at her knees. Well, my Tochan, Ryugan, spent some time in the western lands. This is a specialty of their continent involving both grills and a type of cooking called deep frying. The food is quite delicious. But I must warn you that eating too much is a bit tough to work off to keep your figure for your boyfriend. She whispered the last to Yakumo, grinning and glancing from her to Daihi as the brunette blushed. Are you okay, Yakumo? Daihi asked her while Hanako giggled. Grass Tower, village leader's office. Welcome to my village, Hayate-san. The village leader spoke with a calm tone. She was a dark-skinned woman with multiple braids of snow-white hair despite the fact she looked no older than her late 20s, possibly early 30s. She wore a green gown and uniform with a matching flak jacket, a fedora seemingly made out of grass weaved together and her kuza hitayite around her neck, the cloth of forest green. The honor is mine, Hanabira-san. Hayate replied with a bow of his head. I have the package you ordered from Kanahagakur sealed in this scroll. He revealed said item after removing it from his own flak jacket. He handed it to her and she spoke as she opened it. I hope your trip went well, Hayate-san? She asked. There were no complications. Hayate replied as she unsealed the parcel within in a cloud of smoke. It revealed itself to be a sword, a katana that Hayate saw was very finely made. Hmm. Yes, this is perfect. She will be ecstatic, Hanabira mumbled. Hayate did not make any comment. He was all business with clients and if they chose to impart information to him, so be it. Hayate-san. My sources tell me one of your students is an Uzumaki. The man immediately tensed, looking at the white-haired woman. Hi, he said, knowing there were Anbu in the room. He was incapable of doing anything. And this woman, while no cage, still was powerful if she was the village leader. I also have some members of that particular clan in my village. One woman and her daughters as well as her adopted son, though he is not of the clan. 
They make up my finest Shinan squad in the whole village. I don't have many ninja to begin with, but they are a rookie squad that makes some Chunin have to work hard to keep up. This sword is a gift to the eldest for me in exchange for training my little sister, Ryuzetsu, in the art of Kenjutsu. Hayate studied the woman carefully. What purpose does telling me this do? Purpose? Do not be so cynical as to believe I am telling you in order to manipulate events in my favor. I'm simply pointing out a fact. Maybe the Hokage would like to hear of this, or maybe I am trusting you not to let any prying ears in Konoha know of this. Maybe it is simply conversation. Perhaps this doesn't matter and we are simply at a deadlock because neither can outmaneuver the other in this game of words. This woman confused Hayate greatly but he schooled his features so he could give off the impression of boredom. If the last is the case, might I go then? Hanabira smiled sweetly, innocently. Why, of course. I'm not holding you hostage. I hope you find your hotel comfortable. And I wish your team luck in the upcoming exams. My Jinan squad will be there as well, Hayate-kun. Somehow, the honorific gave Hayate a chill as he left and he wasted no time in using a Konoha Shunshine to leave the tower. He needed to find his team, and fast. Kusigakur, Ninja Shop. Naruto entered the shop, hoping to find ceiling supplies at this one. The last three had been cleaned out apparently. He was alone in the shop and smirked when he saw a shelf of ink and scrolls, completely stocked. He headed to the front counter where an elderly brown-haired and brown-eyed man stood, reading a book, though not the orange wine Kuranai Sensei hated with a passion. Excuse me, sir? He looked up. Konoha? Don't get customers from your village often, my boy. He stood straight. How can I help you? I was looking to purchase some ceiling supplies. Just enough until I get back to my village. The man nodded but sighed. I'm afraid I'm the bearer of bad news today, son. That there along the wall is reserved for one of the clans here in Kusagakur. I'm sure the other shops will tell you the same. Maybe if you convince them to sell you some, but besides that you'll get none. He sighed. Dealing with a clan. That was not something he had planned, nor wanted, to do here while in a foreign village and country. If they were like the Hayuga, then it would be impossible to get anything and he might walk out promising his firstborn in the process. Just as he went to talk, the door opened and a bell rung in the store. He turned, though it was unnecessary, and saw a girl his age walk in. She was a redhead with the brightest hair he'd ever seen, red eyes that shone bright as his crimson Byakugan had taken to doing recently with slim spectacles over them and wore a purple, button-up coat that flared outwards at the bottom to show her short shorts of the same color. Her skin was a tan matching his own and she wore a sultry smirk on her face as her eyes met his. Ah, Karen. Here to pick up your mother's order? Oh. Sure Hijin. I can wait until you finish up with this one though. She walked forward, her eyes scanning Naruto's body. Hijin chuckled. Well, then you're up anyways. He was looking to buy some ceiling supplies but you mother seems to have cleaned all the shops out again. Karen, as she had been called, kept her eyes on the blonde and smiled. I don't know, maybe a deal can be made? She whispered into his ear, making the boy shiver. Recovering, Naruto smiled back. I would greatly appreciate it, Karen-san. I'm. He was about to say Hyuga but stopped himself for some reason. Uzumaki Naruto, at your service. Immediately, the Kunoichi widened her eyes and the shopkeep glanced between them. She looked him up and down once more and her smirk fell back in place. Give him half of them, Hijin. Free of charge. Nani? Naruto was confused. All you have to do. Is prove it. Prove you're an Uzumaki and I'll give them to you. Naruto looked between the two and thought a moment to come up with a way to do as she said. The only way I know how. Would be my seals. But only another Uzumaki would be able to decode them enough to acknowledge I am who I say, he said. Karen tapped her chin with a slim finger and delicate index finger. I've got a better idea. Stop suppressing your chakra so I can feel it, she said. No Uzumaki would have so little chakra, not even a clanless Shinan would. Don't suppress it even a little so I can feel it exactly. Every detail. You're a sensor? Naruto inquired. The best in Kusagakur. Now do it. Naruto nodded and breathed deeply before releasing the pressure his chakra had on itself in order to keep it as bound and small as possible. Immediately, Karen's eyes widened. A amazing. Even more than Okaa Asamo or Wani san. But. Can he be a Nuzumaki? He has sun gold hair. I mean, those crimson orbs are a Nuzumaki trait, I suppose. Then his chakra. His affinities. Remarkable. Okaa Asama will want to know this, but I can't introduce him to her just yet. It might mess with her plans. You are a Uzumaki, Naruto kun, Karen said finally. How long are you here in Kusa? Tomorrow, he said and tilted his head. Why did you care if I was though? Karen simply smiled mysteriously. Oh. 
I don't think I should tell you. Not yet. Are you a Jinan? He nodded, though confused why she asked. In six weeks I'll be in your village and I'll tell you then. She sensuously placed a hand on his cheek and slowly caressed it. Look for me, okay Naruto-kun? The blonde blushed heavily and could only nod as she turned to leave, swaying her hips just so. I'll be waiting, Naru-kun. Don't disappoint me. I think you'll like the reward if you show up. As she was about to leave, she looked at Hiran. Give him all of them. My present to you. See you in six weeks at the exams. Hiran waved his hand in front of Naruto's dazed form, getting no reaction. He chuckled to himself. That Karen. Still. He began sealing the supplies for the blonde and frowned. To think that two Uzumaki would be in his shop at once by accident and not know each other? Perhaps the gods had plans for those two. In his experience, coincidences didn't exist. Keep an eye on Naruto. Haido is the only family he had in with his death. I pray the Kyuubi doesn't take advantage of it. Do you understand, Nico? Hi, Hokage-sama. And watch him Yuugao had been doing. The purple Annette couldn't help but grasp her katana as she did so. It wasn't for any danger to herself or her charge, but to comfort herself. She needed to make sure it was still there and stroking the hilt helped her calm down. It wasn't anger that messed with her nerves, it was watching her student of a few months in his training ground, his personal training ground in the Hyuga compound. With Haido gone, he was the final member of his branch of the main house, placing him as head of said branch. For the last several hours the blonde Hyuga had been training in a way she never saw him do. It was the type of high-level training many shinobi did after losing someone extremely important to them. It was either that, drink or lose yourself in grief. Sword flashing through the air, the Uzumaki created several icicles that sped forward and killed another clone, but there were plenty more in its place. This protection mission had shed light on Yuu Gao's understanding of just how powerful her student was. Alone, he was mid Chunin level, maybe high. Add in his ability to create literally an army or two of both shadow and elemental clones thanks to his Uzumaki reserves and his Hyuga control and that level vastly increased. That variability was what Naruto was using to train his Kenjutsu. In the absence of his sensei in the art of the sword, aka her, he was using a massive cage bunshine to train on multiple levels. On the first, he was simply training his ability to use Shiva against many opponents at once. A second purpose was utilizing the fact that Shadow clones relay information to the creator upon dispelling, allowing him to see his openings in both his doppelgangers and himself. Yet another aspect was having his Shadow clones utilize the fighting style he was forming for himself between Fu and Jutsu and the Tenshiken, thereby training in those at the same time. On top of everything, he was simply relieving stress and grieving in his own way. Yuu Gao admitted that the entire method was quite ingenious, though only he would be able to use it. Maybe another Uzumaki or Jinchiriki as well. It did give her a few ideas on altering her own training regiment for the better though. Shaking her head to clear such stray thoughts, Yuu Gao looked at her student once more. She bore witness as he spun rapidly to block multiple projectiles thrown his way using the Awakens Divine Rotating Boulder, a defense trumping even the Juokens Kaiden. To her surprise, Suddenly the boulder became spiked and they shot outward, dispelling dozens of clones simultaneously. That was new. Perhaps he had achieved a variation on the defensive maneuver by looking in Haido's scrolls? For another hour, Yu Gao watched the fight rage on, Naruto taking quite a beating by his own hands but also taking out each and every one of his clones in the process. Training into exhaustion was not an uncommon method of training. It served two main purposes, it allowed one to gain the maximum amount of training time and it also increased one's chakra reserves once they recovered. Yuga fondly remembered Kushina doing such a thing to her, Fury and Itachi to make them better faster. It was a bit of a feud between her and Minato, in all honesty. They wanted to see whose students could be better, she always thought. Then again, Minato's only remaining student by the time Kushina got her team had been Kakashi so maybe it was simply that she wanted them to have as much skill as possible to survive? Well, with all three becoming Anbu captains before their 15th birthday, Kushina did a wonderful job. It was just unfortunate that Itachi-kun had gone nukemen on them. More thoughts Yuugao had to shake away to focus. She disappeared in a swirl of leaves down to Naruto's unconscious form and checked his vitals. He was stable, just overly exhausted, as she thought. Picking him up. The Anbu captain carried him to the house belonging to him and brought him to his room. Placing him on the bed, she looked around though she had been here before. The room was covered in designs and notes all over the walls, stacks of pages all over his desk. In only two days the room went from organized to this. Crossing her arms, Yua Gao frowned. She didn't know what he was obsessing over right now but she hoped he accomplished it. Placing her hand on the hilt of her katana, Yua Gao disappeared into the shadows as only Anbu can.
Hokage office. He rose inside to himself and took a puff of his pipe as he looked at a certain sheet of paperwork on his desk. It was official upon Haido's passing. Naruto was a named council member of the Hyuga clan. The main house had only five in addition to the clan head, that way should the clan head and all heirs die, there were five possible candidates for the position. The problem was that with the position, he became the head of household within a clan. Sensei, there has to be some way around the law? Jirai asked and looked pleadingly at the old man. Though he had not been in Naruto's life, he still had a certain responsibility to the kid. There is none, Hiruzen stated. I will make the announcement following the Chunin exams, Jiraiya. You, I will need to give him some training in between now and then. Unfortunately, I have my doubts on whether he will sign your contract. He has his sights dead set on another one. A legendary contract in fact. This is despite the fact he has two others in his possession. The white-haired man raised an eyebrow. Two contracts unsigned? Haida's mole contract and the wildcat contract he obtained on his first C rank mission. I've no doubt they will become clan contracts for him, but he only wants one summons. The elemental dragon contract of Uzumaki Miko is his desire and nothing will sway him, not even his teacher's offers have had any effect. Jiraiya whistled lowly. That's a mighty will. I can teach him some other things though, Sensei. Doesn't he have the rest of the time off for training as ordered by Gekko Hayate? Hiruzen nodded. Then I'll use that time. Not all of it, you won't. The San Daime stated. He is also learning skills from Anbu Captain Uzuki Yuigao, Jounin Yuhikurunai, Tokubitsu Jounin Midarashi Anko, and Chonini Nuzukahana. He doesn't want it to become specialized and so he's been taking lessons to broaden his range. According to Yuigao, he is extremely strong for a rookie Jinan. I have no doubt he will make Chonin in the upcoming exams. Hi, Sensei. When can I speak with him? Jiraiya asked. I will schedule it for tomorrow. Be civil, but also express the need for him to learn when you converse. He will no doubt know how strong you are and realize the upside of learning from you. I have already spoken to Hayate and he has told me that he is supportive of this decision. Yakumo-chan will be learning from her clan while Daihei will be taught by a combination of his elder sister and Hayate himself. Sounds good, Sensei. Now, if you don't mind I'm going to go do some research. In a cloud of smoke. Jirai left and Hiruzen groaned, already knowing the extra paperwork this would cause. Oh, how I wish you were here Minato. For more reason than one. Hiruzen shook his head and looked at the stack of papers on his desk, placing the one concerning Naruto in his desk drawer. Naruto will need more protection than he is very soon. If only you were here to teach him. Or even Yukushina. Taking another puff of his pipe, the Kami no Shinobi looked at the papers again, deciding he may as well begin. Training ground 8. Sensei? Kurin I looked up to see Hinata, pressing fingers together. Hey are you alright? The crimson-eyed ravenette looked at one of her two Hyuga students strangely. You were spaced out, Kiba said simply. We all finished the control exercise while you were daydreaming. A bark from Akamaru confirmed the Inuzuka air statement. I'm fine. Kurin I replied to her team. Anyo, sensei. Is it Naruto-kun? Hinata asked causing Kiba and Shino to glance at one another the Genjutsu mistress. Naruto? Like, Hinata's cousin Naruto? Kiba wondered. I believe his guardian passed recently, if I remember right. Shino commented. Yes to all of you, Kurunai said after a few moments. Two of my friends and myself have taken to teaching him in our spare time as a way to repay his late mother. She was like a mother to me after my own died. Kushina sensei. She saw everyone as family since she lost her entire clan. And now you are worried for his well-being following Haido-san's death? Shino inquired. That I am. Just as I would worry for any of you if someone close to you were to pass into the next world. You are all for my students even though he is not a part of our team. I care for all of you equally. THR group of Jinan were silent a moment as that sunk in. Why not invite him to train with us? Kiba asked. Kur and I, Hinata and Shino looked at him. I don't know. Training helps me get my mind off of bad things. So maybe he's the same? Plus, we never really hung out in the academy and it would be a good way for all of your students to bond, Sensei. I agree with Kiba-san, Shino said. It would fulfill many different purposes including accelerating all of our training and enhancing our teamwork. Kurin I looked at the Hyuga heiress of her team who nodded once, conviction in her eyes. Naruto-kun has always helped me when I needed it and I would like to return the favor. I have yet to hit him in training. But I'm sure if we all train together everyone will get better. Kur and I couldn't help but smile to herself and to her team. I'll talk with him and with Hayate then. 
I seem to recall Naruto saying something about wanting inter-team training. Hyuga Library The Uzumaki clan were one of the strongest shinobi clans to ever exist, on par with even the Sijuu, Hyuga, Uchiha and Kaguya clans. Centered around their island of Uzu no Kuni with their own hidden village, Uzushiogakoer, the many branches of the clan coexisted without dispute, an entire village of shinobi who were family. Their most famous aspect was the bloodline the entire clan, every branch, shared. This bloodline was a dominant trait, always born into every infant to varying degrees. Said bloodline consisted of a healing factor massively trumping that of any clan, a natural immunity to nearly all poisons and toxins, a natural affinity towards few and jutsu, extremely high chakra reserves and endurance levels no other clan could boast. Other bloodlines of the clan included many sub-elements, an unnaturally high affinity towards Sutton and the strange attribute of Uzumaki blood to enhance other bloodlines when another clan at an Uzumaki had a child. It is also rumored, though untested, that should an Uzumaki get a blood transfusion from a member of another branch of their clan that they would activate their bloodline within weeks. Some of the more famous members include Uzumaki Mito, Uzumaki Kushina, Uzumaki Miko, Shadai Mozukaju Uzumaki Tsunami and Naidai Mozukaju Uzumaki Arashi. The clan itself suffered a near genocide during the Second Shinobi World War and the surviving members have been scattered throughout the elemental nations. Hanabi frowned and sighed. This wouldn't help shear her Nichan up. Even young as she was at only 10, Hayuga Hanabi understood death and she saw the aftereffects of Haido's death on Naruto. She hadn't really known the old man that well and all she knew was that he was one of the strongest Hayuga to ever live. His awaken had been a fierce style. She knew that firsthand thanks to Narutoni. Pursing her lips, the heiress blew out an exasperated breath. What was she supposed to do? Well, there was his birthday soon, now that she thought about it. Could she not just plan an amazing party and pray it worked? Nodding to herself, she was decided. But who could help her? Atasama was too busy, Hinata was not nearly aggressive enough. Aggressive? That gave her an idea. There was one more person she knew who would want to help cheer Narutoni up. She's just scary. Hanabi shivered as she thought. I hope she doesn't decide to feed me to her pets. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.